Good evening, cookies. people of the Tinterweb. Welcome to Heavyweight Gaming. Oh, I've just smacked my knee on something really sharp, and I'll pretend that didn't hurt and move on. So, ah. welcome to the channel. Uh, if you're new, great to have you. If you're not new and you're returning, uh, good. You're doing exactly what you should be doing with your Thursday nights and watching us play roleplay games. So, we've had a, a busy week this week. So, uh, starting Sunday, we had Dice of the Older. Tuesday, we had. Fables Among Titans, yesterday we had our Vampire Masquerade game, tonight we've got our Carbon 2185 going on. Whew. Tomorrow we've got nothing and then we're Pathfinder on Saturday. We're doing well kids, we're doing well. So, uh, the good things first. Sponsors for this evening, Dragon Turtle Games are sponsoring the show and they're also the creators of Carbon 2185 itself. Um, it is a great game that is based on... Uh, the 5e rules, they used the OGL, they tweaked it a little bit, and yeah, no, that's not working, hold your books up lads, hold your books up, there you go. One week you'll get that to work. One week, one week. Not this week. <laughs> Wait, one week. <laughs> she keeps using weird backgrounds. <laughs> try, I'm trying to be all, you know, thematic, I mean, Rob's seen as a bit best. So, uh, yeah, so they sponsor the show, Dragon Turtle Games, if you go to their web store, uh, dragonturtlegames.com, and buy any of their things, Put in the code WAIT, W A I T E, with a capital W, at purchase, and you'll get 10% off. Um, in doing so, you help support the stream and you get some cool cyberpunk RPG stuff, so do that. We also have, which you can't see, um, Sawdust and Swear Words and Rough Works, who have been uh, just backing us all the way since day dot. Uh, if you go to Facebook and type in Sawdust and Swear Words or Rough Works Creative with an X, not a K. You can go to their Facebook pages and check out their photos and you'll see just incredible woodwork, leather work, just resin work, um, just mental. Roughworks is actually delving into the uh, art form known as uh, electrical wizardry. So we'll see what he's coming up with shortly. Uh, social media, if you look below the stream, you can see lots of buttons that will say Instagram, Facebook, etc. You can scroll down, just tap them, they're all assigned to a link and they'll take you straight there and you can follow, like, etc. We have a YouTube channel if you go looking for Heavyweight Gaming on YouTube. It's gravy time! Thank you very much Dwarf for you. Um, mm. uh, oh, I don't like that. Why did that do that? Hmm. Ooh. Sorry, something's getting weird. I'm going to put it there. Uh, on the fly streaming. So, yeah, if you go find our channel on YouTube, please subscribe. Um, I'm a couple, I say a couple, about 20 ish off uh, 100 subs i just need 100 you don't need to watch anything right this is how bad it is i just need you to subscribe so i can change the bloody url from some stupid gobbledygook to heavyweight gaming that's all i'm after that's me done in life all right so just get your grandma your auntie your kid your hamster give it an account and subscribe just do it my hamster's pretty uh, picky on its youtube subscriptions well just strong arm it well put it in a ring with me all right I'll, I'll go naked it can go naked and we'll let the gods decide all right <laughs> that's friday stream me versus hamster boy so um <laughs> i'll wear a mask and everything <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we'll twitch for three seconds and then ban me <laughs> um five on the hamster <laughs> yeah so tonight uh, Carbon 2185, I'll go around the players and then we'll have a little recap. So, we have playing, oh we've got new uh, overlays as well if anyone's seen, they're very shiny, yeah, pretty and very cyber funky. Um, Snazzy. My very good friend Kelly Jane Games, um, if you check her out on uh, Twitch, she does lots of gaming streams, but she's done all the overlays for all the shows, um, cool. and that's all of us, all of them done now, so she's done loads of, she's done five sets of overlays. Yes, good, yeah. Uh, she did five sets of overlays for us, so go throw some love. She's ace the widower. Um, if you she also want... makes awesome dice trays. That is very true. She's uh, pumping out dice trays at the moment, so go check them out. Uh, Patreon, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, I got asked the other day how to get to it. I sent a link, etc. Just got a Patreon and put heavyweight gaming in. or follow the buttons below. Uh, you can go there. There's a few tiers. It's in dollars. Um, pick one. Throw a few dollars at us and we'll pump it back into the content and stuff we create. As a subscriber of our Patreon, you'll get a e-magazine that is filled with <coughs> filled with 5e combat compatible um, law feats, subclasses, etc. We use it a lot for our Dungeons and Dragons games. If you like what you see, you can use it in other stuff. We are looking at creating Pathfinder uh, Second Edition. 
homebrew stuff to put in there as well, but not just yet. Um, but yeah, it's a magazine. It's like this this month, so it comes out next Friday. Will be the sixth issue. We only starting in January, and it's at 32 pages, and we've still a few more to add in. So you're getting that for whatever you subscribe or on the Patreon. If you do, thank you very much. If you don't, don't worry about it. We're just happy that you're. If you're listening to me, I'm happy. So moving on, we have playing Alex the troublemaker, James. Hey. We have. Playing Larry, the Marine, Roberto. We Hello. have playing Jake, the Street Samurai, Ian. Chase, the Ballistic Fury, or Sugo, in the book. We have Niall. I do. And playing the corpse of the combat medic, Jean Jean Jean. It's we gravy have time. Nathan. <laughs> oh, thank you very much for the subscription. Forced by uh, Deep Paul to change his character's name to Goose or Maverick. Apparently I'm not allowed Maverick. Apparently I'm not allowed Maverick. You're not allowed Maverick. You're not Maverick. (laughs) You're definitely not Maverick. Never let you give me a vehicle again. We will... You can be be my wingman. Nobody (laughs) wants to be your wingman (laughs) right now, mate. (laughs) So we'll have a quick recap. So, this is session 10, by the way, kids. This is session 10, double figures. You're into double figures. We still haven't got off Earth. (laughs) (laughs) Woohoo! The show, the the half. And we crash back down to earth. So, Tenth episode, shirtless volleyball episode. Jesus no, Christ! No, 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 no. one wants to see uh, that. Right, right. <laughs> right, so yeah, just Johnny. lost all my subscribers, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> so we'll have a recap. Ten sessions ago, they were doing a job for a biker gang called the Sons of Chaos. They had to deliver a sniper rifle. Fast right, forward. Time out. Time out. I feel what? like I feel like if you go all the way back to ten episodes, it's going to make us sound really bad. I, I've just said fast That's forward. That's because it is. I've just said fast forward. Fast forward. In doing so, of delivering said sniper rifle, they pissed off Bison, who was an arms dealer in charge of Bison's babies. I mean, he's beautiful. Right? They uh, managed to piss off the Sons of Chaos, who they're working for. They whoa, managed. Whoa, wait, wait, what? That's what? Unconfirmed. That's uh, spoilers, mate. Spoilers. Uh, they've. Uh, <laughs> They've uh, had a dabble with the uh, 16k triads after throwing a few hundred grand at some very really nice revolvers, um, realizing they were nicked. They got them from an arms dealer, and then clicked they were nicked. <laughs> they then gave them back. <laughs> I mean, I need a full recap. Uh, that is true. Kerry is no. She needs to know what's going on. So they've delivered the sniper rifle. They've pissed off Cherry Bonbon, part of the uh, Sweet Shop mercenaries. Uh, top dog mercenaries, by the way. These guys are these guys are on it. <laughs> uh, they've pissed off uh, Bison of Bison's babies. They pissed off the 16K. They may or may not have pissed off the Sons of Chaos. <laughs> uh, they discovered Tina, one of their handlers, um, or later on handlers. Uh, turns out she's a bit of a bad one. And um, yeah, they lost Sparks, their hacker, in a blaze of glory. Uh, well, in a blaze. It was in a blaze. Um, they. <laughs> had the opportunity (coughs) to have a souped up Vin Diesel wannabe maintenance mech. They didn't take that opportunity. It came back and bit them in the ass. (laughs) They then then managed to fast forward all that. They learned from a a bit of their uh, missions. They've got a few bits of kit. They've leveled up, as it were, in years of experience. They went and they tried to do a job uh, for Nightingale um, exploration. They were going to discover some sort of biological secret that a lot of the... Uh, there's a lot of people trying to get hold of, so they went trying to get hold of it. The closer they got to it, the web spread. They got into Nightingale uh, Explorations, one of their complexes. They went in under the guise of one of the HR ladies and interviewing Chase for a security job. That was a session where an interview actually happened in a role-play game. Yes, it's the first and last of my career, I'll tell you now. 25 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Weirdly, it's the most successful plan we've had. So, but the interview part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest oh, yeah of either it either went side wrong. of it was wrong, but the whilst, interview part was sound. Whilst they were in there, they ended up speaking with the Elizabeth who is four entities representing the Crown Estate from Great Britain. They offered a job to Jean and Chase, which they took. Um, They had a couple of options of payment. They chose two out of the three. 
They were only allowed two out of the three. Um, one of them was not the 10 million one month. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's where they were left. So they, they took the job. They then ran back to District 5, got one of their pals killed and run back to District 3. It was great. <laughs> back in District 3, they took a chopper to the private hangar. This was last week. At the private hangar, they were given a beautiful, really expensive space jet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a beautiful, I, really expensive I, space jet. I, think, I forget how many things he fucked up in ten weeks. <laughs> on the on the way out of the hangar, Jean, the pilot, turns out not so much, <laughs> decided to clip the wing on the hangar on the way out. I mean, it was wonderful. They were warned not to damage it. That was their first action. They took off into the skies, ready to go into the nano skyway to boost themselves to the stars and beyond because they were you can't working just for the... keep putting nano in front of words to make I it can't. cyberpunk. I can, mate. That's, that's <laughs> literally will do, though. That's uh, nano, neon, um, fiber, you know, I'm all over this. Um... Nano Starbucks on the corner. <laughs> um, so they were going to Mars, Ooh, to a complex to retrieve some assets for the Crown Estate. They got given a ship or a jet. Uh, they flew the jet. They were waiting to be uh, given the nod to bugger off uh, through the stratosphere, atmosphere, stars, and away they go. And then Bison turned up. I will say that they killed the arms dealers over half, just saying, and then decided to emoji about it, just saying. Not all of us. <laughs> Are we? Not all of us. There's uh, just they, one member they, of this group that's done that. They I'm pointing in... out at this point that most of the fuck ups are biased towards a certain <laughs> member of the team. Members. Some uh, kind of on. combat. Hang on. Thing. So <laughs> they put him on hold. They hung up mid conversation. They killed his other half and emojied him about it. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. So while they were waiting, you know, in traffic to get off the. Uh, Sorry, wait a sec, wait a sec. I feel like there's an important, there's an important bit to add here. Before the 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 emoji about killing the other half, I did offer to save his life. That's, that's not important. That's not. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> All right, That's you, like Genghis Khan. You uh, justify it how you need to drop. You dumped my burning corpse onto a bar and just wandered off. Did you? This is also true. So, Bison and a couple of old style jets, Bison flying the maintenance mech that you lot have just binned off for the last 10 weeks, um, turned up and a aerial combat situation ensued, which I will say is probably one of the greatest. <laughs> combat encounter sessions I've ever run in any RPG of the last May have gone a little 15 bit years. The time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so they had their little jet and the Fort Bison in aerial combat. They were given specific skills and actions they could do with their jet that would ease their fight. Maybe. Maybe. But the person flying the jet, two things. One, wasn't a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Two, two, really, really wanted Bison dead. <laughs> like, so four hours later, they crashed the jet into the ground. <laughs> they did they crashed take it into the ground. The jet kind of broke and then crashed of its own accord. You were flying it. It was the best way I could get us down safely. In fact, it was the only way I could get us down safely after Gene's I mean, action. Larry and Chase did their job. We shot planes down quite happy. You had one job, which was to fly the damn thing. <laughs> The jet is now in bits in a forest. This forest, this woodland, is miles and miles and miles north of San Francisco. It just stretches. It has been made, or its growth, existence, and all that lovely stuff due to the landfill and radiation of what gets dumped on the uh, northern edge of San Francisco. And over time, this forest has just become a side effect. It is miles and miles and miles of it. It stretches no like no one's ever measured it they crashed into this in the jet but as did bison bison had to eject from the um maintenance mech with only four hit points left much to the dismay of the players <laughs> this is gonna be an entire rerun of the first predator movie yep <laughs> it's taken almost 15 minutes to recap all of our fuck ups <laughs> The recaps will be less next week. I just found it quite funny that you'd made it all the way to a fantasy forest. <laughs> I play RPGs to get away from the fuck-ups of life, not to add to the list. So, as you crashed, Jean 
Jake and Larry, you all were smashed unconscious. Yep. In the crash. The thing was obliterated. It's because of your hardy natures that you indeed survived the crash. Alex and Chase, you did, <coughs> uh, you did not go unconscious. Before you, you are, the forest floor is lit in various places from uh, the fires of the crash. There are no wings attached to this jet. The tail end is gone. Um, it is <coughs> in a state. Yep. Despite what Jean thought before it crash landed. <laughs> so, um, you could I probably could've... fix it. You could have fixed it. <laughs> It'll buff out. It'll be fine. So, Alex and Chase, you are still in your seats with the um, clips and belts on. Jake and Larry and Jean, uh, Jean, are still in their seats with their clips on. You are in the... Oh, I need to turn my fan off. There you go, that might be better for the people. Um, uh, it's probably fairly atmospheric. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you are in a the remains of a jet crash. Alex and Chase, looking around you, the forest itself is high, so high you can't see the sky. The canopy is thick, dark green. There is the odd element of light coming through, but this, um, the clouds above the trees anyway are so polluted that there's not it's not like daylight it's just it ain't night time therefore there's a tiny bit of light coming through the canopy the trees are twisted none of them are growing straight they're twisted trying to it looks as though they're reaching out to one another the roots seem to be fighting for space on the ground there is a neon nano fiber green light <laughs> uh, there is a luminescent greenish um, light that's coming off some of the roots and um, some of the fungi and uh, fauna around the uh, floor. I guess the first things first is I'll take my belt off. I'll start beating John with it. <laughs> Not that oh. kind of RPG. <laughs> Call you one clip. Yet. <laughs> yeah. I'll and, take my belt uh, off as well. I'll make my way to the passenger section of the plane over whatever rubble is in my way to see who's alive. Give me a medicine check on the first... So, are you doing Larry, Jake, or Jean? Uh, well, I'm going to check the combat medic first, because he's probably the most useful in case anyone ends up getting... I mean, uh, he hasn't been so far. Shh, shh. <laughs> 16. Cool. He is not dying. He is unconscious. Roll a d4. Three. Three. You reckon it'll take him three hours to come round on his own? Oh boy, he won't need that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on to the next one, uh, which will probably be Jake. Cool. Give me a medicine check. Are you Jenna character? Yeah, you might need that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Jess? I'll unclip mine and I will check Larry. Cool. Give me a medicine check. Uh, mine was 20 for Jake. He is not dying. He is just unconscious. Roll a d4. Four. He will take four hours to come round, you reckon? Cheers. I've got a 15. Cool. He's not dying. Just unconscious. D4. Four. It will take him four hours to come round. I'll, I'll, say, I'll try and... You know, just tap them on cheek, see if that rouses them or see if there's any smelling salts in any of the medical packs on the jet, if we've got any. Um, give me an investigation check. Unit known as Chase, it's probably best to see if there are any survival gear already on board here. That is a 13. 13? Cool. You find uh, the chair that Jake had buckled the two survival rucksacks to um, about 20 feet from you and it sort of broke away from its frame and then rolled uh, along the way. Looking in those packs, each pack has got a nano pack in it. So you've got two nano packs. Uh, what were you saying, um, 413X? Uh, this unit believes that finding survival gear and whatever salvage we can 
muster up would probably be more useful than rousing the others at the moment. I'll point to the two survival packs down here. We've got two there, and then put them in. How far are they like out of the jet or in the jet? Like how they're far still they're still in the rubble of uh, they're still in the crash of the jet. You are not right. actually outside the jet yet. Right. The chair just rolled down to the back of the um, what's right. left of the jet. Um. Yeah. Do what 4138 says. You know, we'll look around the cabin, see what other survival gear we can find. Whilst these two come around, or three, should I say, come round. So you're going to let them come round of their own? Until we've stopped looking and investigating the area, I'm guessing, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, Alex, you give me an investigation check. Twenty. Non natural. Cool. So, other than the two survival uh, rucksacks that Jake had, um, there doesn't seem to be anything else additional um, to it. You do notice empty loading areas, um, as if you were given the jet to get you from A to B, and they were just expecting you to take your own stuff rather than load it up for you. So, But there's definitely slots, as it were, where you will, uh, especially your experience in the military, um, this is where you would have loaded up these APCs with extra gear for longer missions and stuff like this. But this seems to be a quick, here's a couple of rucksacks, don't crash the plane sort of mentality. Oh, don't crash the plane. Hmm. Um, <laughs> is there any way of uh, bringing the crew round without using a nano pack? Uh, if any of you can heal. I'm really good at hurting people. <laughs> yeah, healing is not my uh, forte. I can heal myself. And I have a first aid kit. I don't know yep. if that's useful. You're unconscious, be quiet. Yeah, your first aid <laughs> kit. But it, it just adds to a medicine roll, as far as I'm aware. I don't think it does but anything does it, for healing. Does it... Um... Yes. I don't know if it... Can you get hit points off a first aid kit? Stand by, viewers. Stand back. It can just stabilize uh, rather than get hit points. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it yeah, basically works the same as the fifth ed. I think it basically uh like that does like an auto stabilize effect or something like that. Ah, oh, okay, okay. I think from memory, but I'm not ready for that. <laughs> as an action, you can expend one use of the kit to instantaneously stabilize a biological creature, including synths that have zero hit points. Cool. We're all yeah. stable though already, aren't we? You're all yes. stable, yeah. Uh there's no way that uh, you, there's no way that you know of other than healing. I mean, in your situations before, when someone was out cold and not able to bring themselves around, they received healing yeah. or care for the also. next few hours. Um, Normally, a combat medic. <laughs> I think it's probably best use of our time while these lot are coming round, rather than using resources on them to bring them round faster, is to shore up the area. Make sure that we're not going to get attacked. Yep, I'm going to say, see if there's any other like weapons or things on the uh, plane. We found these two mini guns. You know, let's see if there's all else. <clears throat> this unit is incapable of carrying a mini gun. I can. Um, let's see if there's any other type of weapons or anything else we can effectively use on this jet whilst we're here before we go outside. This unit didn't see anything down in the cargo holds. It was more designed for us to load any gear into it, and we brought nothing but what we brought on our backs with us. I do not right. think there's any more weapons here. Okay. Um, I'll do an ammo count on the minigun that I've got here, what we looted from the, you know, the jet. Yep. Do an ammo count on that and see what's what, and then... So, on your minigun... You have da, 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 da. six. <laughs> you your six magazines, right? <laughs> you pull yeah. you pull the trigger. Uh, you're messing about with the clip, and you flick about the trigger and on the pullback. And uh, there's your gun pretty much emptied the round you shot the last thing. But there is another clip with thirty shots in it. Well, there's another two clips, one for each mini gun. Are we treating these like mini guns, but with different magazines? Heavy mini guns. So instead of a keg, it's just a large clip. Uh, I'll, I'll so it's take the both exact of them, same stats for heavy mini gun, but instead of a keg, a round mag. yeah, it's a thirty round mag instead of a thirty round keg. All right, I'll load one and I'll keep the other one on me, 
just in case I need it. Um, the light machine gun that um, Larry had, you check over that and same, it's out. Right. Is there any spare magazines for that one? Or uh, is that the, the, the two magazines that Chase The two found. magazines, right, yeah. okay. So you've reloaded. Uh, I will say that um, whether your characters are dead or alive, uh, whilst in this forest you are on resource management. So make sure you are tracking every bullet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so this unit is going to go through the unconscious um, companion's kit to check their weapons over to see how much ammunition they've got while they're there. Uh, yeah, what doing. You're going through our kit, was that, sorry? Yes. Yep. So, Larry, can you... I have 20 shotgun shells on my person and no other ammunition. Do you, you have it? a shotgun? I do, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just carry 20 shotgun shells for the shit. Throw them at people. <laughs> <laughs> Hit them with a claw hammer. Does that bush? He throws them so yeah, I've, got, I've um. If you go through my stuff, you'll find... Um, some weird gloves that you've not seen before, sawn off shotgun and 20 shells. Uh, they're not just gloves, are they? Are they like... Some weird gloves that I've never seen before. Well, I've, I don't know what they look like, because you describe you, <laughs> your creation, DM. <laughs> so they are, they're not like um, leather gloves that you pull on. They look like a... In my head, they're almost like brass knuckles that then kind of open up. Yeah, they're like an augmented brass knuckle. That go on both fists, but they do they do fit the entire fist. They're not just an addition; they're an actual addition. From it, Ben. Hoot <laughs> them, you say? Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Jake, yeah. looks like junk. <laughs> Jake, what have you got on you? Uh, I got all of twenty-four ten mil. Twenty-four that is it. ten mil. I use swords, I don't have that many bullets. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't used that many bullets. Fine. Uh, what weapons? I am yet to Just... fire a gun in 10 weeks. <laughs> you fired a, light you fired a, a gun, gun last week, don't lie. Light oh, yeah, machine gun there, oh. Jesus Christ. Some of us call them. You did guns. fire a drone and also blew up a building because you Spark... want to see what the button does. Sparks yeah. didn't fire a single round. You did blow up a building. Because you, you, we had to see what the button does. I have one heavy pistol and my two gladiuses. Uh, I feel like I'm forgetting. Gladi Glad I, I, I don't know, I'm just making that one. It could be wrong. I uh, mean, sounds about right. What have you got, John? Uh, there is a, a 21st century pistol in a holdout uh, underarm holster and um, 30 bullets. Uh, to uh, a mono edge katana, uh, a phase knife, a vibro knife, and a standard knife. All kind of slipped into the edge of his jacket. So mono, mono edge katana, and then a plethora of different knives. I was all I got. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One of each type of knife, basically. Three times different knife. They do all do slightly different damage. <laughs> okay. So, is that is that the rifling done? Uh. Yeah, I'm, the only other thing that I'll check while I'm there is uh, food resources and stuff like that. Which yeah. I suspect will be nothing. <laughs> yeah, kids. Have you got food in your backpacks? Did you pick up your ten rations? Nah, I didn't think so. You relied on Master Wong's, didn't you, kids? That's right. You were all for the noodles. Now it's time. Uh, uh, there are, so if you want to know what else you find on John, uh, as, uh, as AD is giving it some, uh, two energy drinks. <laughs> so, this is a random some environment. Super glue and some duct tape and a torch. The synth after we, we can make a nuclear reactor. We're saved. <laughs> if only we had make, MacGyver. Make a new jet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what appears to what appears to be a bag full of junk metal. I have got to say, Rob, if you open the stream, you will notice that everyone else is sat in front of their camera, and I've just got your little beady head above your name tag. And the rest you of set it. the cameras up. You. I, I can't set how close the camera is to you. It's your camera. <laughs> I can only work with the picture you give me. On zoom, I'm right in the middle. <laughs> so, um, you done rifling, you? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. It takes you about an hour to find the guns, sort the clips out, go through all their stuff, itemize it. Um, so an hour has passed. The um, forest has no animal noises or anything you have noticed. 
you can just hear the fires still burning from whatever fuel was pumped into this very expensive space jet. <laughs> um, since we've done that, check. Have we got any signal on our phones or comms or anything? Have we got a signal? As you check, there is no signal. Bastard. <sighs> Shall we... Check the outside of the Usually place. that happens in places that have been deliberately switched off or high radiation. Yes. I still <laughs> needed to check. That's cool. Um four one three X, should we show up the area like you suggested a little bit earlier? Uh, this oh. unit concurs. Hopefully the airlock system is still working. And one of us can go out and check the area. Uh, there, there, you can see the forest out of the holes in the side of your ship. The jet. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, think the I don't think working. we've got any radiation shielding <laughs> left, so it doesn't really matter now. I mean, you were like you were nearly pierced midair. Never mind hitting the deck. No, that's not what I wanted. You don't. But need I'm that. more than a leaf on the wind. <laughs> <laughs> and you get hit by a giant spine. Ah, yeah. oh, game over. <laughs> Nano rocks fall, you die. Thunder, four one three X. Is it worth a, one of us trying to climb one of these trees, see if we can get a bearing on where we are? We've got completely back into D and D. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we need a cleric. This, this unit uh, thinks it would be a good idea. I don't really necessarily do. think this unit thinks it's a good idea right now. No, not yet. Wait till these idiots are, are awake. When we've got more manpower and the medic awake. Most importantly, the medic, in case one of us falls. Yeah. So, what do you want to do for your next? Jean will be awake in an hour, in two hours, sorry. Are you planning on just trying to set up some sort of little uh, bunker with what you can on the jet itself and just eyes out type thing? And then is it a case yeah. of just a waiting game for them to come around? Pretty take, much, an yeah. take an inventory and set a defensive quarter, and then that's it, and wait for them to regain consciousness. You're defensive. Are you trying to remain unseen, or are you trying to make a statement? So Inside I, a burning jet. Uh -huh. Well, so, well, this determines what you're going to roll. So you'll either roll an intimidation, or you'll roll a stealth. Yeah, it's I'm going to try and remain unseen. unseen. <laughs> I don't know about Chase, but I'm going to try and remain unseen. It's one or the other, so your actual setup, rather than you yourself, it's your little defensive setup. Oh, right, setup. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you either make it blend in where you two are kind of guns resting, aimed out, just in case, but kind of leaning back, so you hopefully get the drop on anything, if it may or may not approach, or you sit right up front to the hole with a light machine gun, uh, gun saying, uh, yeah, let's have you. But it'll determine what you roll to determine the uh, how well you your defences you are set. <laughs> decisions, decisions. I mean, intimidation always helps, I and mean, it always works for me. But British or in, stealth, rate, yeah, carry on. <laughs> but I think in this instance, I think it'd be best if we share up a little bit. You know, not be seen, just in case. Understood. This unit will teach you the art form of the slouch and watch. Cool. Chase, roll a stealth with advantage. Stealth with advantage? Yep. That's not bad. I got a five. With advantage? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Engaging ironic sy syndrome. That this is... unit thinks you have done amazingly well. You have, but that, I mean... <laughs> that is not how I expected that to go. I'm just, just making a note. Did I? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Alright, cool. So you, um... You follow Alex's instruction. He had a bit of flair. You know what I mean? A bit of chase flair. Where you listen to the words of Alex, but you reckon, you reckon you've got this. And yeah, he's good at sneaking, but you know, you know what you're doing. You don't need, you ain't need telling what to do. You're your own Wolverine, lad. You know what I mean? So you, uh, you set up some uh, sneaky defences. Alex, 
as far as your, your side, on your side of the jet, it looks pretty well hidden, but you've no idea what it looks from a distance. Fair enough. Uh, that'll take you about half an hour. So, Jean will be up in an hour and a half. Give me perception checks while you sit and wait for Jean to come round. Twenty-six. Cool. That one. Jesus Christ! This. <laughs> I'm, I feel like my unconscious body is in good hands. <laughs> Three dice. You're not above a five. <laughs> Jesus. Um, what is your you plus to stealth? <laughs> Mine plus to stealth. I don't have any. All oh, right, that'll be why. All right. Do you pretty... have a Do you have a dex bonus? Yes. But uh, still, yeah. that one. I added that to the. Uh, Perception checker as well on the overall. So on your your stealth check, you should add dex to. Yeah. Oh, so you did add it to your dex roll. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I'll just check it. All right. Cool. I rolled really low. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's hope it's not all on chase to save the party, shall we? You you sit there as the hour and a half passes, nothing approaches the jet. Um, but you do see forms on the um, deeper into the trees. You're not in an opening, you're among the trees. Uh, bits of the jet are scattered about for several feet, several 50, 60 feet away from you. Um, and you can see forms that are in a hunkered down um, sort of shape. They move quite quickly towards the area, but then they seem to pause pace around a little bit and then stick I mean these from where from right now where you're just looking and trying to keep hidden they are silhouettes rather than any detail you can see there's about there's double figures easy but you can't you can't see enough of um, or catch them quick enough to get a head count but they don't come close they are about 60 feet is the closest one you see some of it further back that is throughout the 90 minutes you wait. Is it uh, easier to tell if they're bipedal or quadrupedal? You can't make every because of the silhouette shape, there's not enough light to see if there's gaps where limbs would move around or anything. So they just okay. look like moving um, silhouettes at the minute. Mm. That's it then. Your, na for... your 90 minutes passes. Again, they don't come any closer than 60 feet. Their um, movement seems to have slowed as they got closer. Give me a Alex. Mm -hmm. Give me a perception. No, give me a sense motive, sorry. Seven. Cool. You've no idea why they slowed down. Um, <laughs> I, I don't do talking to people. <laughs> I just looked at people's skills. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, three hours have passed you have looted your friends looted the crash set up oh wait did they take that stuff off us no, no. I, no I'm just <laughs> he's right. being facetious Jesus John Jesus John bolts bolt upright after three hours he's like I've been robbed I've been robbed <laughs> why have I got this iron pot on my head <laughs> so you have taken inventory of your pals you have taken inventory of the remains of the crash you have set up a half decent ish uh, barricade um, in case anything comes through the gaps in the crash of what's left. And Jean starts to come round. I'm assuming still buckled in the chair. Yep. Yeah, cool. Jean, you wake up. Um, there's a cut on your head. Your, your reflexes and your training, you kind of do a self assessment, like just by accident rather than um, consciously thinking about it and you yep. realise that you are on one hit point which is a okay. common, common term amongst combat medics did that count as a short rest though? what while you were unconscious not dying? no mate no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a shot <laughs> mate I, t I, I, just, I just got a little black book for you like it's not it's not. It's not even one I share with players now. It's just got you in it. 
<laughs> just a picture of Nathan on the cover. I'm, I'm going to do a couple of uh, content videos just about you. <laughs> so yeah, so you you come round. Okay, I kind of look around. Um, can I see any of the other guys around? Uh, you see, well, see, so you look over because you're in, you were in the passenger pilot. You kind of look over your shoulder. Um, you just hear Chase trying to be stealthy. Um, <laughs> and uh, you 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 hear the scraping of metal on metal. You look over your shoulder and you see Chase just adjusting his um, light machine gun and Alex uh, dying inside at the noise it makes. <laughs> but um, you I'll see kind of, um, you see Jake and Larry still buckled up in passenger seats. Okay, I will um, I'll sort of unbuckle myself if I can. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Not too bubbles, and I'll um, I'll sort of like. Chase and sort of start to get up and, and walk through and like and I start to look around me at the ship and like just I'll say it as I'm it says Chase I'll be like just put fingers to lips saying <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I, I just look I kind of look at Chase and I'm, and I'm just like yeah oh okay <laughs> just expecting Chase to go if it bleeds, we can <laughs> kill it. <laughs> you Spent <laughs> three hours putting on uh, what campaign? <laughs> three strips of camo paint. <laughs> <three. laughs> Just three. <laughs> I am camouflage now, right? Four one three X. Hollywood uh, camo paint. I'll go over and check. I'll go over and check. Seeing sort of Jake and, uh, and Larry down, I'll go and check them out um, and sort of see what state they they appear to be in. Just do me the one medicine check. Uh, 22. Oh, yeah. Uh, both come round in about an hour. Both need healing. They're stable. They're not dying. Um, they will come round in a similar state to yourself. Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll kind of like pull up a chair um, and plop myself down. Where are you getting next... this chair from? Well, I'll, I'm assuming there's a, there's a chair that's <laughs> strewn around the the. You go, give me a strap chair. Shag the shag. Yeah, this classic give me, give plate wreckage chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, it's a deck chair. Wow, that's a, Sun lounge. It's a good job I rolled high on my strength check. Uh, what did you get? Uh, Fourteen. Cool. Yeah, you grab one of the um, dismounted jet plane chairs, and uh, you just drag it over and kind of position it so you are near Jake and Larry. I uh, I plunk myself down in it, um, and then I heal myself with a basic heal, um, and I kind of just sort of sit there, look at Chase. So, did four one three X crash our plane? <laughs> it's gravy time. Well, you didn't. <laughs> oh, he went there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> PVP boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you're healing someone else and you're on one hit point. <laughs> no, I just healed myself. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, I was shooting the jets down, I didn't see who was flying the plane. No, that is true. Uh, t to be fair, if, if you got it down in this state, you did well. Um, say to you, quietly, um, 413X saw entities below, around... 10 plus. Don't know their intent. As you kind of look out, Jean, as yeah. your nanites, um, which is not me, it's in the spell description. I mean, healing description. <laughs> uh, working, their, uh, working their magic on your wounds. Um, you notice that the, the similar scene that Alex and Chase saw of the twisted trees, the luminescent greens around the roots, and uh, the fauna and such, you see one or two of the uh, silhouetted ships, 60, 70 feet maybe, out and about. Again, you're not in a glade, this is among the trees. Okay. Um, I'll try and, uh, well, I'll try and calm Alex. It does not work. Yeah. Shit. No signal. Where is he? Alex. Can I about, see him? He is about 10 feet from you. Oh, okay. okay. I, I look over. Uh, sorry, I thought he was in a different. Place. No, no, no. They're both yeah. kind of in that same 
uh, well, passenger area. Just, whereas Chase is kind of nonchalantly leaning against the hull, yeah. 413X has just stepped back into the darkness. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> He's not in the cockpit because there's no, no way someone yeah. can attack you through the ground that the nose of the uh, plane is in. <laughs> 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 uh, I kind of like as I'm kind of sitting in the chair looking around and going, yeah I might have overestimated my chances of fixing this <laughs> uh, this unit has taken a stock of the current situation and as was when I was working in the military the term is FUBAR uh -huh. it is definitely FUBAR right now I mean I'll start to have a. I'll, I'll sort of like try to um, conscious of, of Alex at least clearly looking like he's trying to not be overheard. I will try to carefully check over the, the the essentially the wreckage to get a feel for what might be salvageable, um, but I'll do it real quiet like. So I'm, it's a visual inspection rather than a rather than. Oh, actually, right, so just having a visual. Yeah. Cool, give me a stealth and a engineering. Uh, so the stealth is 21. Cool. And uh, engineering... Uh, engineering is 13. Cool. So with your visual inspection, you you do make your way around the parts of the... Um, you guys are in the, like I say, the passenger area. Um, you do do it quietly. Neither Alex nor Chase hears your footsteps and you move stuff carefully and just not getting too um, invasive into your assessment you you can see that there doesn't seem to be any power running anywhere um, the light source in here is coming from the smaller fires in and around uh, just outside there's none in this area the fires seem to be on the outside of the wreckage and whatever time of day it is which uh, it was pff, nearly um, dinner time, noon, for you non-Northerners. So that's the, you left in the morning when you went off yeah, into yeah. the skies, travel and such. And it's been three hours since you were uh, thinking you're well into half twelve, one o'clock maybe. Uh, but you can't seem to see any, I mean the obvious damage, <laughs> but there's, uh, other than that, as for what you could salvage would require deeper, noisier, pulling apart of stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. But no no power running through the ship, that Do I can tell. Doesn't appear so, not even the backup. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the fires, anything, any any sign of fires near fuel, fuel storage areas? Nope. Okay. I kind of like, okay, all right. <sighs> It'd be good to, um, I was sort of saying to Alex and um, Chase, it, it would be good to uh, see what's salvageable. We may be able to scrape enough together to create some kind of moving vehicle, um, depending uh, on the state of the of the electronics, but there's no power running through the ship. This unit has a query. Sure. Is the unit known as Gene now an expert in mechanical engineering? and creating of automobiles. <laughs> exactly like that unit was able to pilot and fly a plane. Well, one three x is going for it tonight. Uh, 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 no. Um, then this unit believes that probably the best thing you can do is watch out of the window for now and wait for our two other companions to regain consciousness. Sit back down before you hurt yourself. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you require a sense motive on that job. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I mean, at least I've got a hundred percent record, and it didn't cost me an arm this time. Yet. <laughs> there's a there's a subtle shift in the darkness, <laughs> as if there was probably a follow up comment of, yes, an arm. <laughs> So, I like your idea of the moving vehicle. Just no, not yet. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, the lack of comms is a problem. 
Yep. Also, Bison's out there somewhere. Uh, what are you doing for the next 50 minutes? I'm going to relax, <laughs> chill Why out. Not? Why not? Lean back in my little chair. Um, take a nice short rest. <laughs> since, since, since Yawn's um, come around, started moving around and whatnot, I've been talking, moving around. I kind, I kind of try to reposition myself so I'm stealthily hidden again. Hopefully not as bad as last time. I like the fact you assume you were hidden in the first place. <laughs> so, note to self, this is for you, Chase. You've made a roll for your action. You do not get to reword it and keep rolling until you get something good. <laughs> the, the idea behind it is you roll, your stealth check determines the DC the other people have to see you, not how, how well you think you've hidden. Chase has no idea. Concerned. As you far as you're concerned, yet. you did a great job. <laughs> exactly what Larry has said. As far as Chase is concerned, you're hidden. You have done a good stealthy job with Alex's advice. You've just set the target number for me to spot you as five. <laughs> so as long as I roll a dice. <laughs> just, just so we're entirely sure, even if I rolled a one, I could spot you. <laughs> I could roll a two and see him and I've got nothing in investigation. <laughs> so, so, now we've discussed that. Uh, you're having a short rest, John, yeah? I will say that Alex and Chase, you do not get short rests because you are concentrating on whatever these silhouettes and guarding the place are. But you do notice Sean not giving three monkeys. All right. This unit is noting it for later. <laughs> Noted. Unless you do anything, your time will pass and Jake and Larry will start to stir. Jake and Larry. You awake, you are both on one hit point, just so you know. Uh, you are alive. still in your seat, buckled <laughs> in. You can see Jean in front of you, um, looking maybe unconscious, <laughs> but uh, a lot more like laid out than normal. Um, oh, just chilling happened? out, and you see Chase and Alex, you can just see the tip of... I'll just leave it at the tip of Alex, just uh, your own imagination. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> everyone in the plane gets six hit points. Cool. Do we? That, so everyone. Why? What does John do? It. What does John do for that to happen? Patch him up. Patch him up. Read patch him up. Uh, at the end of a short rest. So at the point at which I get to the end of a short rest, I'll let, let you determine when that is. Everyone can get six hit points. But they haven't had a short rest. It's not them. It's me. So read it out to me. At the end of a short rest, creatures I'm with get 2d4 d d hit points. Cool. Done. You have 6 hit points. You wake up. Just as you wake up, Jean leans forward and just um, activates his nano magic. And you uh, both receive 6 hit points. Does it say yes. you get it, Jean? Sorry, I was just reading. I'm just going to check the real rule book for you as well, dude. So, um... Because that was my that was my shorthand description of it. On my oh, track. see, one of them dodgy bastards, are you? Uh, no, I don't get it. It's the people I'm with, not me. Oh, okay. uh, but you healed yeah, yourself yeah. anyway, didn't you? Yeah. But cool. actually, no. They they have to have the short rest as well. So so my plan didn't quite work out. I so think. what you're saying is none of that happened. We're still no, like yeah, you're okay. still you're still an activity still, went off, but no one uh, received any benefit. To bothered my ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, I found a pen uh, and everything. <laughs> Uh, why, uh, that... have, if you were having a short rest anyway, it wouldn't have made more sense to use up the rest of your heals since you get them all back. But he didn't, so no. <laughs> yeah, it's too late now. I just kind of for future reference. It's okay. like they've all got it in for you, John. Shit notes. <laughs> yeah, Finn, it's just that John's decision making so, in the last. So John two does hours. indeed lean over, place a hand on both Larry and Jake, and then sits back down. It's more comforting than anything else. Uh, <laughs> everyone alive? I think so. I'll do the same as when these uh, well uh, wake up, finger at least saying shh, um, entities around ten plus, but keeping it quiet. So I keep voices down, don't know intention. How hurt am I? Am I one hit point? Did you say? What, you're both on one hit point, yeah. <sighs> Nano pack floating about, or healing people. 
It just uh, finished up. Turns we out playing crash is sh short fucking hurt. I'm a stiff breeze away from being in a bad way. So. <laughs> I'll lean forward and heal them both. Uh, one at a time. Okay, let them know. How many heals you got, okay. John? Uh, I'm using, this is just using my quick heal, this one. Oh, is that, is that like a country heal? Infinite heal? Uh, it's not infinite, I just get more of them. I get I get five of those. Uh, I only get two of my other ones. Cool, so you've so, used uh, one of the two and two of the five. Yeah, yeah so that's one near and four. So Jake gets... Uh, it's 1d4 per doc level on the second level. Wait, 3d4 plus... I'm gonna unbuckle my seatbelt at this point and just kind of stand up and just kind of you, uh, check myself. As you as you're rolling your shoulders and having a stretch, you feel the, the uh, wound of the tattoo removal just, just eight, pull, eight point eight points on Jake. Pull sensitively. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> and two six. Uh, and ten points on Larry. Am I right in saying we're not on Mars then? No, we never even left the planet. Oh. This unit believes well, as per the last of the GPS coordinates from the plane before we landed, we are several kilometers, if not ten digits of kilometers north of San Francisco. What in the forest? Yes. Shit. Right, I'm gonna get up and check all the all my equipment on me, see if anything's been damaged. Yeah, I'll check. Same for me. I'll check if I've got a photo first. I'll find the photo immediately, make sure that's okay. Mm. Cool. The photo is okay. Cool, I'll pocket that and then check over the rest of my kit, make sure. Your gloves um, seem to be stuck in a standby state, um, as in you're unable to activate them. Can I spend some time trying to uh, unstick them? You can indeed. Um, Jake, your helmet remains in the headphone state and doesn't come forwards. Can I try turning it off and on again? You can. It does nothing. <laughs> you can tell everyone that works in IT just then. <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any of you lads decent with engineering mechanics? Uh... Uh, this unit believes that the unit known as Jean is going to build us an automobile. <laughs> Probably the unit known as Jean is com capable of engineering. Can I show Joel? I'm pretty good with technology, that's all I'm saying. I'm not an engineer. This unit I... does not believe you are a technology whisperer. Can I show Jean the gloves and kind yep. of explain the design of them and see if he has any knowledge on how I can unstick them? Yep, so Jean, uh, you notice that the gloves he's given you are common amongst prize fighters. Um, you've worked on a couple of the fighters um, during your medical training and such and when you were doing your um, job for parts and stuff you got to see a fair amount of them they're quite popular off-world when they get shipped out off-world to the colonies and stuff um, so you reckon you reckon with a engineering bit of tinkering you could attempt to fix them it doesn't seem to change. Is, what, damaged. is it? Is it? Is it a technology fix or is it a hard? Is it like a? Is it more of a? I imagine it's mechanical more than tech. It's a. It's a mechanical fix. Yeah. Right. So, so, it's, uh, so it is a tech roll. Right. So it's. Um, but is it, I mean, sorry. My question is more: Is it like? Is it a physical break or is it? A, is it a mechanical break in these things? Is it, it is, a is it like a, You would be rolling yeah. mechanics. Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. No. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to decide whether or not I can nano it. It's not really my thing. I don't really know how they work. I just use them. I mean, I'm not. I'm reasonably good with tech, but this isn't really my bag, right? I, I could have a go, but there's no guarantees I'll be successful. They do a better job than I will. Are you sure? You want me to? Because I might, you know, make it worse. I was going to say, if, make you, it if, you're not if you're not oh, confident. Oh, they are again. Can I check my headset? My headphones. If you're not confident, Sean, don't do it. Oh, disgusting. I kind of. Look around the plane and. My this unit, I can only <laughs> wish that the unit known as Jean was confident and had the same experience about flying. If there was a picture of Bison on the uh, gloves, would that encourage you, John? To, uh... It could be used to kill Bison. There is your encouragement. 
put it well, this like, way, if we end up in trouble, I'd rather have them working, um, and I'm no good with tech. If the rest of them aren't any good, you seem to be the best option. Even if you're not that great, you're better than nothing. <clears throat> Get a shot, I believe in you. You ain't killed us yet. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll... I mean, before I, before I start to mess with them, I will kind of go and have a dig around in, like, the cargo bay or what's left of it, and, like, check under the pilot seat see if I can find any kind of tools you find you find a couple of um, like a traveller's tool set type thing oh, um, excellent. that will allow you to do some minor stuff um, you don't think it was part of the jets uh, inventory maybe left there by uh, one of the maintenance folk back at the hangar but there's a okay. couple of like tweezers and a small soldering light and stuff I'll kind of, and I'll, I'll set these gloves down, and I'll be like, "Go on, right. cool." That'll no take pressure. you about twenty minutes, and give me a mechanics roll. Let me know what you've got. Look, even you if it what? goes wrong, you give it a go, right? You're more likely to get it right than I am. There's some nano okay, tweezers I... and nano soldering iron, some nano calipers. <laughs> While he's repairing them, can I look for an improvised melee weapon of some description, either a piece of steel or just you can grab a like piece a... of steel. And it will. Like an improvised. Yeah. Uh, that piece of steel, if you take the stats for button out okay. of the book, and that is essentially what you have. Jake, you were looking at your helmet? Yep. So. Um, I have some mechanics experience. Give me a mechanical roll. Uh, watch me roll on that one. I fucking called it. No way, that's the seven. Um, oh, nine. That one, it plays Danger Zone on loud. You can't turn it off, <laughs> ever. That was um, on nine. There is, as Alex has already used a term, they look full bad at this moment in time with your nine. Not great. You don't think you can repair them at this with the resources you have. Fair, I need to come back on. I'm going to check so. the light machine gun I have, realise I'm out of ammo, and go... I mean, I can use this. It's not really my thing. Is anyone, can anyone carry this? Keep it with us. Might be worth a few quid. Jesse, Big lad over there. And just keeping the tool clips. Yes, he is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got, I've, I've, I've got, go, I've got weapons. It's just, is this any good to anyone? What is it? He's showing a light oh, machine gun. gun. It's the other heavy minigun. Yeah. Does that a... count as an assault rifle? It no, it counts no, as a heavy no, minigun. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I can. I mean, I'm, I'm proficient with it. I can use it, but Does it just count? seems like a lot of. Is it a, a vibro knife? <laughs> <laughs> Anything's a vibro knife if you hit your mind enough with it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I mean, I can use it, but I'd rather have the ammo on Big Lad over there, and it seems a lot of weight to be carrying around for no reason. I mean, I've got two. I've got a spare clip for that one if you need it. If you don't want to carry it, I'll keep both clips. Do you want to carry yeah. this and maybe flog it I, when we get back I, to society? I've already got this one. I don't really want to be carrying another one. Because I'll, I'm I'll, not like... I'll, I'm, pr I'm pretty strong. I'll, I'll carry it just for the sake of keeping it. And if we need it in an emergency, we've got it, I guess. It's at this, point, say... it's at this point that Chase and Larry sort of take a breath and realise neither of these weapons were bio-locked to you, and yet you were still able to use them. They were being, I'm guessing, unbio-locked, you know, just general use. Uh, if they were unbio lot they wouldn't work. Whatever technology is allowing you to use them is expensive. I think it's something to do with that random posh crew that gave us the jet. Potentially. I mean, I look, I'll ship. keep. I'll, I can't use it at the moment. You've got the ammo. Keep it. I'm not too fussed. I'll stow it. It's heavy, I guess, but I'll put it on the side of a backpack. I'll I'll keep it on me just as a. You can you strap the light machine gun as best you can using your backpack and the fifty foot rope. Yeah, I, I would say like try, make a, a I'm make six four hundred ten k. Like I'm gonna be able to carry this thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. There's no issue. I'm a big yeah. Um, Addy, so when the ship crashed, are we flat on the ground or do we kind of get caught in the canopy? You're in. You're on the ground. But is it is like weirdly angled or just proper flat? Uh, the bit you're in is flat. The nose is in the ground, but kind of separated from the bit you're in. I don't know about you lot, but I could do with catching my breath for a few hours and just taking a bit of stock and just 
having a bit of a rest before we do anything. Uh, I've got a 14 on my mechanics roll, by the way, Aidy. Cool, you, you fix them. Ooh. Uh, you have a little play, you realise that it's just probably the impact, uh, a recent impact, <laughs> may have uh, just jarred some of the circuitry and you just... Similar, but not necessarily like a plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, you just realign um, the circuitry in there, tighten everything back up and they're good to go. I feel like this right. might be harder, but can you have a look at these if you manage to fix that? I'm going to take a short rest while well, this is going on. Yeah, me and, me and 413X have got this place, you know, on lockdown. You know, we've got guns pointed. <laughs> I was about to go get a lookout from the, those bubble things at the top, but uh, can Jean, if he managed to fix the glyphs, have a look at the head, take my helmet, because my AC is lower, meanwhile. Wow. Not that I know what AC is, but I'm more than easily to hurt. That was Unit brilliant. known as Chase, <laughs> would you like to take this opportunity to explain your plan for getting a vantage point? Climb the trees, Jess. Yeah. Um, you hear a voice. You hear a voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, I said it to Farm and Three X earlier. Probably, you know, if one of us climbs a tree to get a viewpoint and get our bearings, see where we are, see so we know roughly where to aim. Um, As the bad guys. <laughs> uh, I said this to Farm and Three X. You know, it's worth getting our bearings by doing that, so we know where we're aiming. But obviously. I didn't want to do that until everyone was alive and fighting I mean, fit. So if I'm that means that if you free me to take a short rest to get a bit of your breath back, you know, for Jean to do a bit of healing on you, so you're a more fighting capability. That would you be guys still got any comms with these people you're working for? Weren't you know, were they paying you lot to get to Mars or something? So I does working? not believe that comms work in a high radiation area nope. such as the forests north of San Francisco. Surely they're going to know that the plane's gone down and that we're not on Mars. They're not going to come looking for us. Maybe not right but, away. Well, I, I, that's, that's probably not an unfair assumption that the Crown will perhaps want to retrieve their what jet. What's going, on this, what's going on this goddamn plane? I thought we were going to Mars, not you having a raging hard on to kill us, trying to kill that guy in the whatever the hell he was flying. As much as, as I would love to get into this conversation, let's not get into that now. Let's actually think about the situation we're in. We'll deal with this later. I mean, Killing I don't know what the hell I'm dragging myself into. Killing Bison solves a lot of problems for us. Is that the guy in the... Currently, this unit yeah. would like you to put a pin in all conversations regarding Bison and other than the current situation. If we do not find out how far away we are from San Francisco, this unit, with 40 years' worth of combat experience in the military, will determine that we have a 0% chance of survival. While I understand your need to know what is going on, unit known as Larry, and I understand that the unit known as Jean is temperamental and probably experiencing some form of hormone influx. This unit known as Chase has a good idea for finding out our ascertained area and then getting us back to San Francisco. Mm. At which point, as soon as we walk through San Francisco's gate, the unit known as Larry and the unit known as Jean can feel free to continue this conversation. But until such a time, this conversation is not fruitful to our survival. It's pretty fruitful if you guys as skeletons in your closet come rocking up into this jungle and try and shoot us out of <clears> the sky. I don't think we're getting in the sky again anyway in time soon. You get what I mean? The guy, like, we're meant to be doing any... No, Alex, to... look, Alex is right. Right now, the priority is we need to figure out where we are and how we're going to get back to San Francisco. Right, so, I was trying to say about Neo Chase's idea. If someone can fix this, it tells you better farther away. We can get a better idea where we are. I'm also good at climbing, so two for one. Because I'm very agile. <laughs> athletic. Or You're dexterous, very athletic. if you prefer. <laughs> but you're looking quite... I know what I said. <laughs> but you're looking quite crippled, though, Jake. I'm just saying. I'm going to take me, a rest. Let me, let me look at his... <laughs> let sure. me look at his so uh, give me a mechanic. Might be a sure. bit harder to fix than that. I think it's a bit rarer, but... Yeah. Cool. Yeah, can I, I can't try do and help since I've these. had it for so long? <laughs> Um, John has a look at him, he we'll spends, about about, three days. spends about five minutes, if that, and he immediately hands them back to you, Jake, and as he just said, he has no idea how to fix them. I tried. Well, we, we don't have Chase, that way. Please can you but Jean, plan. Jean does know that they can be fixed, just not here. I can still climb well. 
don't even know if I want to talk at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so is somebody <sighs> climbing? How? It, just looking at Jake, how crippled does he look? Does he look crippled, bloodied? He's got a few more. Uh, oh, no. I'm at, I'm at, uh, Jake, Jake, uh, you, Jake, you should not be climbing any trees right now. You yeah. need to just sit down, let... If, if, if someone's going to climb a tree, it should be one of these two guys who was clearly more able to survive the crash than than than, than any of us. And that is my expert, <laughs> look at Alex, medical opinion. Ooh. <laughs> You're... Just get my spoon to stir that pot. <laughs> if it wasn't for that roll I made last time to believe you, I would say things right now. <laughs> <laughs> the dice be fickle, my friend. Just as a DM question, is long rest one or two hours in this? Short rest is long one rest. hour. Sure, okay, cool. <clears throat> Minimum one hour. Long rest is eight, I think. Yeah. Long oh. rest is eight hours, six of it asleep, or for since, four hours, blah de blah. Um, and two hours light activities, i.e., being oh. on watch. In which case, I... yeah, I'll, I'll take that hour then while this is going well, after I've handed the gloves to. Um, Jean and I'll go and take an hour and check what's hurting, what isn't, and try and recover some strength. Cool, Jack, what are you doing? Is um, how? What's the high difference between the top of the ship and the canopy, roughly? About forty feet. That's not, uh, still fairly high. That's yeah. So the trees themselves are about seventy feet. Some of them may be taller. The canopy is high. These are radiation landfill, absolute beast fed trees. These trees lift. These trees lift. Hench, hench trees. <laughs> <laughs> and they eat meat. Uh, I'll have a rest too. Cool, so you're all having a sh another short rest, yeah? Can the medic oh. maybe heal us some more before we rest? <laughs> The two synths, are, the two synths a are not having a rest. We're quite happily waiting for all the rest of them to come to the same conclusion that we came to about ten minutes ago. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'm saying I'd rather get some strength before we make any sort of, before we enact on any plan. Uh, so, I, so I, so go on, go on, so, John. No, no, so while while those two are getting a rest, I'll kind of like I'll look over and say, so what, what is the plan? Did I stutter when I was saying the plan? I was fixing the gloves. I didn't hear. The best thing to do right now is, because we've got no signal or electronics, is try and climb one of these trees and get a bearing of where we are so we know which direction to head right, towards so what, San Francisco. Okay, I, and I think that... Okay, so I, so I heard about the climb the tree thing. Yeah. So I, I think it's a great, great plan. What do you need us to do to make it happen? get a little bit more energy and strength into use so if me if I climb the tree and these entities that are around that we still haven't got a better look at decide to come in I'm not going to be up shit creek effectively up the top of the tree you know you know we need everyone <laughs> you know we need everyone to be fighting fit for us to do this so we can all actually once I say right San Francisco is that way you know, we need to be fit enough to literally go that way. And at the moment, you three are really not in that state of mind at the moment. So, okay, I mean, uh, yeah, if we if we take some time to rest, I can get everyone back up and running, right? But we shouldn't just go up the tree and bugger off. I think there's stuff we can do with what's left of the jet. We need to do a proper salvage job on it. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't recommend we just necessarily leave this stuff here. I, I would be shocked if I if I if I don't go out and have a proper wander around, not trying to, you know, all these be jets quiet about it. I reckon. I reckon I could probably salvage some bits off this. We can at least use in some way, shape, or form. These jets not got like a black box or something that you don't want to fall into the wrong hands. Who knows what's out here? Exactly. Right. And I, I need some time to salvage this thing properly. Radio. I don't know what you. Well, you techie types can do, but I know antennas, radios, data boxes, 
You said something about you had a little contract details on a USB. It's worth yeah. having a look at that. Well, and, and the power on this thing's out. I don't know why, right? So the power could be on this out just because there's some connections fucked. It could be the power's dead. I need to look at the shit properly. So I'm, I'm happy to do that while these guys are resting up. I can start doing that. I'm conscious you guys have spotted stuff outside. I don't, I, you know, is it safe for me to, you know, have a go? Because I don't mind doing that you guys are watching my back and then let these two get a bit more of a rest <laughs> we could but you know I think, he's, I think he's got a good if you've got your fella out in these woods as well if he comes across this wreckage when we're not here if he to say he doesn't salvage it and take stuff use it against us he seems pretty angry with that mech of his. We don't really have any tools to disassemble stuff. We do salvaging would literally be ripping stuff off, which makes it less valuable. Don't know, he's, yeah, got, a, he's got tools to fix these gloves. I like Doc's idea. I don't think it's worth leaving anything we can use. I'm not saying we strip it down to the frame, but there's going to be bits and pieces on here. If you guys have got stuff you don't want to fall into the wrong hand, stuff you won't want anyone else stumbling across. Well, this isn't our jet. So we've got nothing on here, I've got everything on me, what I've came with, but... You want this bison fella finding it and stripping it for parts and sticking him on that mech? Yeah, we need to find that, we need to try and find that USB. We need to try and, you know... I'm guessing one of us has still got that USB contract on us. Yeah. Can we not get any, have we got any way of powering anything up, see what's on it? I know I it's say, I think I think Alex has got I think Alex had that. Are any of the USB things what have we got no power to the ship at all? There's no power on the ship right now, I don't know why. Without going out and doing a proper check out, you know. I'll tell you what, let us get let let me, you and the Jake have a have a get us bearings, get some strength back in and then between the five of us, more of us can at least watch you back while you have a look around. If you piss someone off out there now and we get into a scrap, we're not much good to you. 13X, you okay with that? This unit was just assisting that you were going to take a short rest. This unit has not been paying any form of attention to your communications. That's a good Great. point. Are our communications to each other working? Nope. This unit uh, can I once again have... assure you that technology does not work in a high radiated area. This unit I... will wait for this to compute with your own minds. And I don't have the advanced comms kit um, as Larry. I don't. I'm not dialed into your network. Cool. I'll sit back in my seat. So um, I'll, I'll wait out the rest of the rest. The rest Jake, the Larry, rest. John, another short rest. Alex and Chase <laughs> on guard. Yeah. John, heal us. Before. Yep. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I, just before I uh, just before I put my arms up into this position, I will give them both another quick heal as well. Go on, then, give it a roll. <laughs> I think it's two hit die. Uh, so that's uh, five hit points for Larry. Oh, sorry, no, wait a second. Uh, yeah, four. Oh, wow. yeah, do it around this. Uh, these guys are such a pain to pick up. They are. Uh, uh, ten hit points for Jake. Thank you. Chase and Alex. Give I'll, me I'll also I'll also do myself with my with my other quick heal. Um, cool. And 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 a heal. Chase and Alex perception checks please. Not twenty. Oy, there nice. we go. It's only taking nineteen rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-four. Cool. What was your total, Chess? My total was... 22. Cool. So, you... The funny thing is, Alex rolled a 4. <laughs> you, um... <laughs> <laughs> 16? <laughs> uh, looking out, you see these silhouetted shapes moving. They're about 40 feet into the trees. Um, and then they move back to 50, 60 feet again, as if they're probing the area. You do see now that the odd shapes and that, that they move, that they look to be um, bipedal and two arms uh, or two limbs um, 
in that humanoid esque shape moving around. They do seem to be quite wide. But again, they are still silhouetted against the trees moving uh, between them. Uh oh. Does our rest come to a end at this point? Uh, your rest will now have come to an end. Cool, well, hit that. Alex and Chase are able to tell you that it is between the hour of two and three. Um, over the comms just to comms follow don't work. X. Comms don't oh, work. Shit, I'm not on your comms network either. But he said just uh, to Alex anyway, but it doesn't work. Right, I'll direct it to... You get, you get another three hit points back. Another three, did you say? Yeah. Quick, I'm almost on the hacks. I'm assuming... I'm nowhere near. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to use your hit dice? I've used two. Oh. I'm right. a sponge. <laughs> um, I'll direct this at uh, 413X then. They're getting closer. I'm retreating. This unit can confirm they're currently testing the defences of this area and will probably look to make an attack within the next 15 to 20 minutes. Hey, we Doc, can, how'd you get can, on with them gloves? We can switch up and go. Intimidation. Extent. This unit, after ascertaining the uh, current layout of the environment and the abilities, combat abilities of this crew, does not believe that we can survive a heavy sustained fight, especially with the low armament that we are currently carrying. In fact, while this unit believes that the best advice is still to climb the tree, find out where San Francisco is, and make our way there immediately, the unit known as Jean still wishes to try and ascertain whether the plane that is currently detached from its own power generator is still salvageable. The only thing is the plane that's salvageable, we could do the parts in the plane that's salvageable. If we, can get a, if, if we can get the radio working on this thing, can't you guys speak to those four British fellas? This unit will once again reiterate that technology does not work yeah. in a high radiation environment. Our comms don't. What about the plane's radio? This unit will once again reiterate that technology does not work in a high radiation environment. Okay, so you high all technology then. How are you or the guns working if neural links are also blocked? Is there our technology? That it's unit not. is internal to us and currently we do not have radiation within our own bones. I always completely different to tech. Same as the com. No, it's not. Some of no. them for it, for example, this unit can ascertain that wireless transceiving across radiation is very difficult. As Wired <coughs> transceiving is doable. Um, if you I like, I could plug you into the ship. No, I believe you. <laughs> I'm good. Um, now that I've had a LRS and I'm feeling better and clearer headed, can I try my headphone, my headset again? You are still convinced that it needs a better workshop to repair. 413X, <laughs> question, you've got military experience. Yes. yes, this unit has 40 years working as a military scout. Excellent. Uh, what is your threat assessment of us traversing the jungle, which is unknown to us, heading towards San Francisco at a distance significantly further than one would be able to travel in a day, versus staying in a location that at least has defensible assets in the respect of the remains of this jet. The remains of this jet will currently probably ascertainably flood with some kind of radioactive waterworks within the span of a few days, thus killing any the sustainable bioorganism that's still within this jet. That is not precluding the 40 plus ability of the minions that are outside that are currently probing our environment to thus attack us. Having ascertained that there are 20 shotgun shells, 24 10mm bullets on the unit known as Shake, and 30 10mm 30 bullets on the unit known as Sean, you are ill-equipped for taking on anything that is going to be probing ours. Thus, the death will happen with less than 24 hours ascertained to all units with inside this jet. Mine out for 40 years, Captain Logic over there don't have. But the, uh... I mean, there's also the fact of food. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. The, I mean, I've... Back in our, like when I was serving, like if you're trapped here, like if you didn't know the environment, you find your way to a place you can get rescued. If we've got no comms, that's that's mission one. Get either let your bosses know where we are, or find somewhere where we're safe. Yeah. Right. So plum, tree climbing. Plum tree climbing for Jake. 
Tree climbing. Are you waiting to find out what Jake sees before you make another plan? I mean, while Jake's still climbing the tree, I'm gonna I'm gonna scope out the ship and see what I think I can potentially salvage. Internally from it. or um, externally? Both. Cool. I'll well, join Chase in a defensive perimeter if Alex wants to jump in on that. Uh, if if Theron's going outside of the plane, I will take point going outside the plane first. I'll go with Plus Chase. I've, I've got the big gun at the moment. I am the big gun. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, Jake, you're going to leave the plane anywhere to climb a tree. Jace, yeah. Chase and Larry, you're going to do a defensive perimeter. And I want to be at least semi-inconspicuous about it. I'm not just going to wander out going, hi, I'm a Marine. I want to at least duck and cover and keep it on the down low if I can. Okay, but you're going out with Chase, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Are you two going out to protect Jean while he's doing his thing? Is that the plan? More or less. Like That's both Jean and to Jake. Well, Jake will be up a tree, but yeah. Yeah, it's more keep an eye on Jean, but like keep a two pair of eyes better than one and kind of fanning out and see yep, what's yep, going on. Yeah, that's cool. And Alex, you're holding defensive point behind the makeshift defensive barriers, yeah? Uh, well, or, first or, of all... Or are you going out? Sorry, man. First of all, this unit is going to attempt to ascertain in the cockpit area if the black box is there. There's no James, for example, knows that a black box is normally in the same area as a pilot, but there is no. I don't know if it's the same. There Fair is enough. no black box. I didn't think there would be. In which case, he's going to go outside. It's going to go outside and take up a hidden stealth area. Cool. So, Jake, give me a climb roll. Alex, Larry, and Chase, give me stealth rolls. Jean, give me a robotics roll. Uh, that's athletics, isn't it? Yep. I don't think it was robotics like a robotics roll. Yeah. 18 on stealth. I got a 7 on stealth. 7, 18. 18 on the climbing. Walk softly and carry a loaded gun. Alex. But you missed the first part. 25 on stealth. 25. 17 on robotics. Who got the 7 on stealth? Chase. Yep. Of course yeah. he did. It's, it's yeah, whenever yeah. you make a stealth roll, mate, it's always going to be sevens. 18 for <laughs> athletics on Jake. And what did you get, John, for your robotics? 17. 17. Right, cool. We're going to take a break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, going uh, 10 minutes when one of us falls out of a tree and the rest of us are mauled by angry mutant dogs. <laughs> So we're gonna it's have okay. a guys, guys, <laughs> we're gonna have a we're gonna have a quick break. You'll uh, on the next scene that I put up you'll see a load of images, links and stuff like this of people that have supported us via the stream, the e magazine, uh, character art on other shows and such and such. Um, and it's just our way of giving them a bit of airtime essentially for people watching. Uh, if you are watching, thank you very much. Please, please keep watching. We're only gonna be gone about ten minutes, fifteen minutes tops where we have a bio break and grab a brew. Uh, so stay tuned, please come back as quick as you can, uh, tell everyone that what's happening on the stream so they come along and uh, watch it with you, and we shall, yeah, 10 minutes to write new characters, uh, and we shall be with you as soon as we can, okay, so see you in a sec, see you in a sec, bye bye, bye bye. Bye.
I do folks. We should be back on the air. Um, so before the break, we they've crashed. The jet is crashed in a forest. This forest is a heavily radiated forest. Its growth and size and vastness is probably due to this radiation and the uh, mutations of uh, plant life. They are hunkered down within the wreckage of the jet. They've set up some sort of defensive... Um, just drag things over to give themselves a bit of cover if something was to come flying in. They've noticed humanoid shapes on the perimeter of the crash. They are not in a glade, they are in the middle, uh, they're in the thick of it, as it were. Um, the closest these humanoid creatures have come is, or entities, whatever they are, is um, about 40 feet and they were still only silhouettes to the keen eyes of Alex and Chase. The party have had a great conversation. They've spent about seven hours <laughs> sat in this wreckage. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, in this uh, wreckage, um, planning their way wherever. They're trying to get their bearings and we come in while I put on some tunes. For those that can hear the music, um, I will just point out we use Sirenscape. They're brilliant. Uh, they do have a free version where a selection of ambient music that you can use. They are doing a online browser version that you should be able to stream to your players if you play or, uh, over um, conference calling and such. It's really cool. Um, definitely go check them out. If you do check them out and you do speak to them, feel free to drop in that we sent you. Um, it don't mean anything, we're not sponsored or anything, but uh, if enough of you say, oh yeah, Heavyweight told us to come and use you, they might sponsor us, so yeah, cool. Uh, so yes, the background music, hopefully you'll be able to hear. If not, I do apologise, it's on the same mixer as the players, so I can't adjust everything. Right, so just before, Jake, you started climbing the tree. You head out the top um, of where there's a bit of a crack in the metalwork, and you pull yourself through onto the top of the jet. Once you are out of the enclosed area, the air is it feels thick to breathe in. The there is a um, acidic taste, very much akin to if you're very close to the sea, you can taste salt in the air. Here you've got an acidic taste in the air that is just it makes you lick your lips and sort of smack your lips <coughs> a little bit. You jump down move to the nearest tree which is feet from you as you hit the ground it's very mulchy um, it's soft it is thickly blanketed with decaying growth but also plenty of life seems to be springing in and around this decaying growth the mushrooms and fungi and fauna that are around the roots seem to reach towards you or you check out your periphery because you swear one of them moved but it just seems to be sat in its place the roots are thick and reaching and ugly they are not beneath the ground and deep reaching as you'd expect on most trees these are surface reaching roots and they seem to be more interested in feeding off the top layer rather than deep beneath you start climbing it is the bark is wet not soaking but wet enough that it is annoying to touch every time you grab another bit grab another bit you start climbing okay. through you start sweating the humidity is horrible you this tree you're in is about 45 feet 60 feet uh, 45 feet 6 feet 45 feet up from when you reach the roof of the uh, jet when you look out you can see you're now level with the jet you've done about 15 20 feet you do the other 40 feet and up you get you get up to the top and you're now in the canopy of this massive tree and you can see that the instead of it just being a short reach of leaves they actually spread in a bit of a willow style weeping willow style where they're really widely spread reaching for one another as the canopy seem to be in some sort of dark green horrible dance stroke fight amongst themselves 
um, as the canopies are reaching towards there seems to be several canopies when you look it's almost like segments of canopy throughout getting to the top you look out across the top of the canopies this is one of the taller trees uh, in this immediate area and you can see taller trees in the distance it stretches for kilometers and kilometers miles and miles depending on what side of the pond you're on you are it is a vast distance you can see to the south the city of san francisco it is a massive city so you are not shocked that you can see it and um give me a perception check that's uh 18. cool not knowing the distance you reckon it'll take you three days to get there that is a guess going through the top of the canopies in a straight line straight to san francisco it is a judgment call on your time but that you also spent in the military um and just being out and about of the outside the city and having to uh, tab um, kilometers and kilometers each day and stuff through training and smaller missions but you reckon if you were to just set off in a straight line through this forest you get there in three days two nights out easy how long that takes you through thick growth and whatever gets in your way you don't know but as how... the growth lines Sorry. go on that's it um, i was gonna say how thick is the canopy at the top of it you wouldn't be able to walk on top of them. I was thinking more like <laughs> how to keep climbing sideways along the branches because that would kind of be... As you, as you look out and watch, like the branches you're in, they're pretty sturdy, the ones that are reaching straight up. But the ones that reach out are more like thin fingers. Imagine right. you were on the forearm stroke wrist of the tree. The canopy spreading out is the fingers and you wouldn't want to risk chase at least hanging about on there some of these uh, I mean you're, you're a hench lad chase is a bit more pie heavy there's all good damn you oh, should be fair um okay can I see anything else from up here possibly closer to us closer to you you can see larger trees as in taller trees um as you look at them what do you get in your perception 18 yeah you can see what seems to be tree houses um, in the distance in some of the taller trees um, they are not great they look like they're made from from the forest itself but they're, it's like when you make a den as a kid you can despite right, okay. making it out of branches you can clearly see someone has made a large nest and called it a den <clears throat> okay I think this might be my last question before going down I meant to ask earlier actually okay from more time in, time in San Francisco, do I remember hearing any kind of rumors and stories about the forest? No. Uh, well, rumors, yes. Anything that you would believe, no. It is a forest grown from the landfill. District 5, don't care. District 4, don't care. If, even if they even know it exists, they don't leave, they don't go out. The landfill at the edge of District 5, before on the northern side, is exactly that it is just dumpsters that come along under a small guard that immediately enforce violence if you go anywhere near them so the district five will just let the dumpsters turn up dump the sludge and whatever waste they're throwing out from the higher districts and off they go hanging around mercs and cyberpunks and gangs the forest north of san francisco is one of those typical um boogeyman stories of it's a forest it was grown by radioactive crap um, hey look swamp things got a machine gun type mentality no one's put any factual evidence against it you don't know of any scouting parties or anything that went out into it um, no one's paid anyone to go there no one seems to have an interest of checking out some trees right okay uh, I think that I'm, I'm guessing I'm not seeing anyone else having a look out at the top of the canopies from around me not that you can see uh, okay i'll head back down cool while you're doing all that um alex you let these three go out first and use them as your distraction to disappear essentially um you disappear beneath neon tree be it you disappear um, beneath the wreckage and kind of use the bits of metal and other material that you don't really recognize um and the fauna again 
uh, is soft ankle deep in some places just like layers and layers of fauna and then you can oh, see s just on. before I go can I sling one of the rucksacks on my back yeah you can you just can. because it will help probably with more camouflage yeah and when you leave the pie I understand um. <laughs> 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 uh, and yeah you three don't even notice Alex you know that he left you heard him leave the jet and then gone uh, Alex you are now very confident that you are hidden from prying eyes unless they have technology to see you would be your confident assumption uh, give me a perception check while you were hidden. Nineteen. Nineteen. You catch a glimpse of a couple of the um, humanoid um, ships. They still don't come within forty feet. You know, that's their their max or minimum. Um, Is that forty feet of the fuselage or forty feet of me as well? You right now. Okay. Uh, you so where you are right now, you are kind of under the jet rather than right okay. twenty feet out into the thing, unless you move, which is entirely up to you. But right now, where you've just come out and hidden yourself before making any manoeuvres, forty feet from you, you can see two of these humanoid shapes, and they look to be really heavy up top, shoulders and arms. Um, they are wearing say clothing they are wearing similar ghillie suits that you will have worn back in the good old days um they're more natural than synthetic these ghillie suits there's no shock uh, considering where you are they have smaller um back legs or the clothing they're wearing definitely gives them appearance that they're smaller from the waist down and heavier up top they seem to have something in their hand that is about three feet long um, again you can't really see the details of it and they have something hanging that is swaying like it's clipped to a belt rather than holstered but it does look like it's a firearm of sorts you just can't make out the details of it uh, and fac just... facially they've got the same leaves and ghillie suit s pulled over but they are okay well while i'm down here i'll just test the laser pointer on my submachine gun. Does it work at all? Just pointing it into my hand. It flickers. So I turn it on and it intermittently flickers. Intermittently yeah. flickers on your hand. Yeah. I'll turn it back off again. Um, I'm going to attempt to make my way out to... Are they doing like a pattern approach of getting closer or are they just like random areas? Uh, the two you see random um, but there is again 10 plus that you you just you can't keep tabs on them enough because some of them just keep disappearing and then will reappear to your left or if they're the same one you don't know but there is a multitude of these ships okay i'm going to try and move further out away from the fuselage how far about 20 foot cool and still remain stealth yeah yeah you do that all um super alex <coughs> right you three knuckleheads so <laughs> <laughs> Larry, Chase and Jean you jump on um, yep. Larry uh, Jean were you stealthing as well I'll take it yeah I mean I'm not going to be I'm not yeah. going to be like clomping around the woods roll a stealth check I know you've already got your robotics going on uh, 19 cool sorry 18 you you and uh, Larry nip down um, you sort of lean towards Larry leans on a couple of the roots and ducks down pulling some of the fauna near him Jean you step out and go to the right and hide near some of the wreckage um, and then you see Chase just jump out hit the deck full Iron Man style right. <laughs> um, all his bullets jingle a pigeon in the distance <laughs> 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 um, Place a single leaf behind his ear. <laughs> yeah. He um, just chews up a leaf. <laughs> um, I am one with nature. Whilst you two are hidden and you're confident that you are not like, you know, invisible, but you reckon you could probably sneak up on one or two people, 
Chase is not. He just stands. It's like he didn't know whether to go left or right. He just stands there with a light machine gun in his hand, looking. <laughs> Jean, uh, you notice this. You kind of stick to checking out the external. Oh, thank you for the raid, Dice of Beholder. Hello. You um, check out the external of the wreckage and the battery that the jet runs off explodes in your face um, would is made up of three um, cores into a sing, into a central block yep yeah you reckon the three cores are salvageable you'd obviously need a bit of time to release them from the core but whatever is Whatever's blocking the battery supplying the core, you don't think you can fix. When you look in there, that you can see the crack uh, in the metalwork and a liquid drip into the ground. First, first guess is the core is too cracked to repair, especially without a decent um, shop or garage or whatever it is that you need to fix a space chair. <laughs> but, um, but you reckon you can salvage the actual energy blocks themselves and there'll be three of them they do weigh 20 kilo each give or take depending on how you know the materials used but you reckon 20k each okay and a bit of scrap metal that you could grab for yourself for other salvaging properties but of yeah. anything worth salvaging just those three energy cores Okay. All right, I will um, subtly sort of pass that information on to to the two guys I'm with, Larry and uh, Larry and Chase. I mean, I don't need to be subtle around Chase, clearly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> meow. What did uh, you say? <laughs> Am I hiding? Yeah, Yo, you're doing a stellar job, Chase. Uh, you're doing exactly the role we need you to play. It's fine. Um, Eight. So do we want to? Um, yeah. So, yeah. There's no way. There's no way I can get the. There's no way I can get the power running back to the ship. Um, but those three cores are probably worth quite a bit of money. I reckon we should. I reckon it's it, it's worth our effort to lug them with us. If we're gonna if we're gonna head out, in my opinion. I hear this, which is just that. Yeah, yeah, I'll he's, this he's talking what I'll tell to you. you, and, yeah. you right, I'll yeah. talk, I'm talking to you. How heavy, are, how heavy are we talking? Probably about 20 keys each. For, I mean, I can carry one, I guess. How volatile? Do they look stable? They're not going to blow up on us? Sean, give me another robotics check. Uh, 16. Cool. They usually have a weak... Um, like sanctuary on the uh, on the power core that it kind of self contains it so as long as they don't get bashed about I mean severely bashed about like shoot them or put them on the floor and go at them with a baseball bat you reckon you've got a week before any real danger would uh, um, reg regarding their volatility volatility there we go it's not a word they should be they should be relatively secure for for sort of five six days um and beyond you know directly trying to smash them up uh they're unlikely to degrade any further for another week or so also it might be a bad idea if we need them leave them in a bush lure some nasties past it so i take a shot at them might deal with a few of these uh nasties out in the brush yeah there is that i suppose they could right. potentially be rigged also Maybe you guys that know that sort of stuff also for one we don't know if these guys are these entities are hostile yet. We don't know that. Let's just keep that in mind. Do not shoot first. I right, Han. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll uh, I'll carry one if you can look it I, out. I can, you know, I can carry one. one. I don't fancy carrying two or more. I don't fancy carrying any. You know. I mean, look, we've trashed the jet. We haven't completed the job. Bison's out in this wood somewhere. Uh, we're fuck knows how far away from San Francisco. 
Uh, I've got a bank account I can't access. Those three cars are worth something. I think it's um, worth having them just to salvage some value out of this. Like, exactly. If you're in trouble with the jet, it might be a... How much would you say that they roughly could go for one of them? AD, do I have any clue what their what their black market worth might be? Black market. Or, uh, well, actually, sense. well, no, actually, no, not black market. Their uh, what their worth might be on the market because well, I've got access to the auction houses, haven't I? Yep. Yeah. So, give me a. What they're worth on the streets? Give me a streetwise roll. Uh, that'll be an eight. Cool. Uh, you reckon they're worth hundred mil each on the street? <laughs> that tree. Uh, <laughs> I mean, these these are these are pretty much the heart and soul of the jets, right? They are they're worth a, they're worth a small fortune. We get these back to we get these back to crown. They're gonna be happy. I mean, you want to sell them? I mean, that's stupid. But I mean, they're worth hundreds of million. When he says hundreds of millions, literally just look at him as if he's like, are you smoking something? That can't yeah. be right. Just give me a streetwise. In fact, give me a robotics check with disadvantage. Disadvantage, yep. okay. Hit watch, 20, 19. <laughs> <laughs> 13. 13. Hey! Cool. So you you get that the power cores are there to help put power into the vehicle that you are uh, in, flying or otherwise. How how much is put into them? Whether it be staffing hours, technological advancement, power. Uh, there's a bit of a shopping list that you can put together. You reckon they're worth some? You've no idea if Sean is right or wrong. You just don't know. You f you feel free to make your own assumptions, but you don't actually have any knowledge that says he's wrong or right. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just going to look at him saying, I don't believe you. I mean, I don't, I don't deal in the street markets. I have no idea what their street worth is, but I mean, they're, they're, they're high-end tech. That sort of stuff doesn't get dropped on the black market. So, you, are you wanting to sell these or bring them back to give back to Crown Estate? My view is they're the most valuable, salvageable part of what's left of that jet. You know, we get those back to Crown, it might go some way uh, offsetting the fact that we trashed their jet. <laughs> Although I've got a different plan. That isn't, you know, uh, I need to get back into comms range and then I reckon I can get us where we need to go and at least go and do the freaking job we, we need to do before someone else tries to kill our ass. Rob, move your camera now. Or move your head up. There you go. <laughs> You're alright, Ness. You're not too bad, mate. Right, is, is, is there any... Is there any way we can MacGyver these power gen... or whatever, these cars to try and... Give me a history check. 15. 15. Cool. Yeah, MacGyver. You've, uh, you've heard of the museums and MacGyver <laughs> cinematics. Okay, carry on. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> right up there with the A team, man. You know what I mean? Is lugging these things around with us really worth the hassle it's going to be lugging them around with us? What, kilos, what, was, what was I was going to say? I can, press 20, I can press 20 kilos and I'm not. I'm, I mean, what am I? I'm a buck 80 versus you guys. Right, the difference between. Yeah, but normal lifting... bench presses don't explode when they're shot. And the difference of doing well, a couple of reps them. here and there is different to carrying that same weight for hours on end. Yeah. And what I was going to say is, we, can we not MacGyver these power core, whatever, to try and boost signal from where we are? John, if you, if you are able to plug it into your Nokia 3850, then uh, you reckon you could definitely boost the signal. Blind a few people, but it'll definitely boost the signal. Alright, this is a... This is a spaceship power unit. 
right? even if we this, do boost the signal, it's going to come. Take craft in a space, right? Along with the okay, some other stuff. There's some fuel. There's some jet engines and, and stuff like that, which is all in bits back there. Um, these don't. These these aren't going to miraculously allow us to communicate through heavy radiation. Uh, Alex is right. That ain't so, happening. <laughs> so, as I no, I won't say it. Now you've all spent several hours in a heavily radiated forest. Can you all give me fortitude saves, please? Ooh. Or a badlander, it's only certain badlanders that resist it, isn't it? I don't think I'm the right badlander. Uh, fortitude, 19. Cool. <laughs> Just keep on your numbers, I'll come back to you. Oh, dear God. Uh, you're a badlander, you're a bruiser, mate. Oh, no, I'm not immune then. That just gives me the intimidate thing, not uh, immune. Yeah, it's the scavengers that are um, resistant to it. Never mind then. Nope, yeah. I'm not. However, you are quite intimidating, so. I am pretty nails. Yeah. Right, have you all done your rolls? Mm, sadly. Yeah. Cool. Oh dear. Alex? Natural 20, 22. Motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Larry? N. Ten. That's with a plus five. Sure, <laughs> Jesus. Jake. Jake. Uh, I forgot what that. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. I dissolve immediately. Cheers. <laughs> At twenty, so twenty-four total. Jesus. Pricks. <laughs> John. Not twenty-one. Oh, Sixteen. Sixteen. Cool. Um, Larry, you take one level of radiation. What's that mean? Dude, oh, yeah. it doesn't sound good. <laughs> uh, for now, an extra toe. For now, it's, I'm all right with that. it's one level of exhaustion. Well, until we find the actual rules for Is there actual rules for radiation or is that we just using exhaustion? Uh, I'm using exhaustion because I thought there was rules in here. I'm just trying to find them. I may be talking Rich. absolute bollocks, in which case I'll be home brewing it and you'll be getting. <laughs> I, know there's, I know there is. Um, Conditions. Conditions. Uh, yeah, so take a just take a level of thing in there, don't worry about it for now. I'll always wreck on that. Level of exhaustion, yeah? Yeah. Go. Cool. Is that disadvantage on all Disadvantage on checks. ability checks. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, it doesn't look like they're in here, so I'll write them up, that'll be fun. Hey, I've got a feeling you'll be here for a couple of days. So yeah, the rest of you, 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 again, you get that horrible taste. Um, Jake, you make your way back down into the um, jet. You see Chase, Larry, and Jean on the outside having a bit of a conversation. Um, they're not hidden. You can see them clearly as they're talking and talking to Chase, the not hidden meathead. Uh, before you interject that, Alex, you move 20 feet off. What were you doing or planning on doing? Asking him uh, if you could join him or <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for a cyberpunk? <laughs> yeah. I have this search tab but got, unfortunately isn't working at the moment because you know tech doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So what are you doing with you you got twenty feet close, so what are you doing? Well plan. Uh, basically I, I wanna move closer to the, the creatures that are moving backwards and forwards and yep. probing us. Just so I can get a a better ascertainment of the the um, thing that's hanging off the belt that you said may or may not be some kind of ranged gun or yep. something like that. Yes. Um, and also to try and work out through their camouflage what they actually are uh, if at all possible I, I will probably attempt to ambush one and take it down quietly you don't think you could ambush one none of them seem to be far enough apart that in your experience would give you enough time to drop incapacitate etc etc um okay. the firearm um give me a perception check and to uh, try and figure out what they are uh, 24 24 cool it's a crossbow they have a small crossbow clip to their belts um and they look as human as you could living out in a radiated they, forest. Do they, they look like badlanders? Mm, 
Not obviously. No. There, there's not obvious. I mean, if you're not a dad, I mean, Alex could it, definitely guess that folk living out in a radiated forest would be of a bad land uh, feel. But they don't seem to be, from what you can see, they don't seem to have the obvious features that will tell you they are badlanders. They communicate at all. You do hear grunts and clicks and a very soft. Ooh, ooh. The owl people. The owl uh, people. But no one that says spoon. <laughs> Give it two days. <laughs> <laughs> There's no Spoony McStabby just yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, that, that's about it. That's all I want to do. And just ascertain if they're attempting to get at all a lot closer or encircle the three meatheads that are stood just outside the, the jet chatting to each other like it's that time of day. Cool. Uh, yeah, it is, by now you're looking at it's coming up four o'clock. By the time when you, you say four o'clock, are you saying PM? PM, or four PM. You, oh, right, okay. you set off at crack of dawn, remember, to the hangar. Yes. Um, so it's four PM. Uh, whilst you are all meeting up again, Larry, just so you are aware for your Badlander stuff. Yep. The currency in the Badlands is power cells. Whether okay. they be small to generate, you know, to generate power through a flashlight. Would I be able to use that knowledge to have a rough market value of the ones that would power a ship of the size? You immediately, off the very fact of what Jean's just described, the <laughs> the price tag you put on them is live like kings in the Badlands. But you're also very power. aware that if you have that currency on you, i.e., things that are able to do that, ain't no Badlander gonna go, yeah. I'll be your subservient because you've got power cells. They're gonna want them for themselves. But out, outside I'll, uh, the city, them three things. Woo! I'll let the guy. Um, are we all together now? Are we all all together still? now? Yeah, you are. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, answer, I didn't answer the question at all. <laughs> <laughs> it does. He only sings it when we're all together. <laughs> we're all together. All together. Great. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, um, no, no, you're not. I mean, I've not seen any of the power cells as techy as those, but I don't know how many of you have been out of the Badlands or grew up out of the city, but they're traded for a pretty penny. Uh, one longs and general currency only really gets you any far in, you know, in San Fran and in any of the big cities out there. It's resource. Three cells like that, you'd be looking like kings. Which also means out here, anyone who sees them is probably going to want them. There's no That's different from carrying three suitcases full of cash. So we got to keep them in there. <coughs> oh, we could use them as a bargaining chip to get out of here. They're worth. Is there. Do what I even know? Of, of there, there's, there's not a number, mate. There's not a number. It'd be. It's just a direct comparison of. You're, you're minted for the rest of your life. How long, how long yeah, do I think it's... it'll take me to strip them out? With the tools you have at hand, two hours. Those power cells would mean you never have to do a day's work again in your life. You're, you're doing everything by hand. You don't have a, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, nano spanner. We need to check. We need to. Uh... And we need to check with Alex. Is Jake? Is Jake back over yet with us? Uh, yeah, Jake's, Jake's just above you in the unless he jumps down, but he's in the show. In the, yeah, in the close enough to here. Yeah, yeah, you're close enough to here. I'll just stay in the tree for a bit. Cool. Jake, where'd you what did you see up there? Uh, looks like we're about three days out from the, if we want to try and get to the city. Probably longer going through the actual branches and woods and forests. Is that three days hard travel or is that three days with proper rest? You need to stay in the forest at least two nights. Yeah. Okay. So. So when we set off, doesn't matter that much. We're gonna have to travel at least part of the time when it's dark anyway. My my players, I reckon we spend the, the time I need to take those things out. We try and make sure that whatever those things are in the wood don't spot what we're doing. Don't try not, you know, try not to distract them from what we're doing somehow. Make sure they don't see it. I'd, I'd suggest, I don't know, fire. Um, and uh, and then um, 
and then we hightail it and then we and then we move. But and I can look around. But we should probably get Alex's opinion as well. Opinion or otherwise, I'm still thinking if we can get those they're worth holding on to for the vibe. I mean right. there'd be more than we need to see in a lifetime, but it, it's gonna put a target on us if someone sees them. Okay. Seems you four of seems you four of a knackered doing that regardless. Taking themselves is not worth the time and hassle that it's gonna bring us. Uh, I did also see us what looked like a settlement that way. If we can trade these and even one of these and finding to help us get to the city faster and not be in a radiated forest. Trade Some this wood in houses. for a, you could trade this in for a business, let alone a ticket. Yeah, but you're the one that Just said I want to make us a target. What if we only take one for now and leave the rest here? Uh, business in the woods. I, it's my dream. <laughs> um, leaving, them, leaving them here, there'll be anyone who just comes across them will have them. Jean, do you think you could repair this ship enough to, with your nano, to give it the um, seal, so we, so we can stay in here longer, effectively? I mean, I can. I mean, I can use my tech. I can use my tech to. I mean, can I can I like you know fashion this into more of a habitation? Probably with a bit of time and effort. You need to move, not stay. But I, I, yeah, I'm totally with Alex on this. Staying here isn't an option. We can't we can't survive out. For All it takes is one scout or one badlander or one whoever is in these forests to spot that we've got these cells, and everyone within miles is going to come running for us. And, and also, my nanites won't be able to keep radiation at bay for long either. So if, people, if we start to suffer effects of radiation, my nanites will only be able to do so, so much. The they'll the stop floor. working. Chances are everybody knows the power cells are here. The crash was not subtle. Exactly. So people are coming here and they're working out what's going on. They're going to try and salvage it the same way we had. So we've got two choices. Either we salvage it and then we've got something we can bargain with out here, right? Or we just piss off now and let other people worry about that. The way I see it, if we, the way I see it, if we salvage it, it gives us a bargaining chip that we can potentially deal with the hostiles out here with and it gives a bargaining chip we can potentially use with Crown we get back if I can't sort that shit out some other way. The, the thought being was if we can show her up a little bit, use the power cells to send, even though it's radiated, a, a long enough pulse or a signal to Crown to say this is our location. Crown already know it. They don't know our There's location. No Bollocks. There's no way Crown don't know exactly where we crashed, or at least within at least within a relative a relative radius. Bollocks. So you don't, you don't weren't tracking us. They're not they're not interested in us. They're interested in the jets. Like they're not going to give a toss about mercenaries working for them. Otherwise, no, they'd have no, gone no. up to Mars themselves. Exactly. Yep. Um, if, if they're coming after us, it's probably to make us pay for the jet if they know it's crashed. We'll yeah, just they, kill us not, off. Then, uh, yeah, they'll know. They'll know. I don't. I don't think. I, I agree. I don't think they're going to come out here looking for us. I think if try and get, back, get to San back, they'll come look for us. Try and get back to San Francisco with these power cells. At least we can reclaim some of the money. They're not just going to shoot us on site. Yeah. How big are the actually are the power cells? I reckon I can find us. I reckon I can. I I think that I I'm owed a big favor right here. I reckon I can potentially pull that in to get us to try and complete the mission for Crown. That's how we're going to take care of them. They still need the mission doing, you know. And yeah, if we they still need someone to go to Mars. Just need to give us a new jet. <laughs> Eddie, these, yes. these these power cells. Yep. You said the twenty kilo, but how big are they? They're big about. Or... They're about a foot wide. Yeah. So a ruler, thirty centimeters, like a foot wide. Bucket of like trade paint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And about two feet high. Yeah, they ain't fitting in the suitcase. I it'll, can fit, in, it'll, I can... it'll fit in a rucksack. Yeah, yeah I've, I, I've, I've got nothing else in there, really. Yeah, with the overlay, Alex, I can't see that your bottom half, so I can see your hand <laughs> doing this. It's about <laughs> this big. Look, the, long, the longer we sit in these Five woods, the longer, longer we sit in these woods, longer people have got eyes on us. People know we're here. We need to get moving. Right. So let's get this done. Where's Alex? <laughs> Does anyone, anyone know where he He's is? He's interpretive dancing in a corner somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Off three days to San Francisco. Do you, <laughs> do you need a hand getting them out of the ship? I mean, yeah, I'll tell you what to do. Well, um, then I'll, I'll yeah. go with Doc and try and muscle them out. Alex, you make yourself visible to this lot. No. 
Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask. Outstanding. <laughs> so it's right. going to take you a couple hours to rip them up. Yeah, I'll crack on. Uh, I'll take I'll take defensive position up. I want to stay in the tree and keep watch, but there's something else I want to do first in the ship. Or, but it might be just a question to add you rather than actually doing something. Um, what actually is in the survival pass? Uh, there we go. <laughs> what are you looking for specifically? For a while, but what are you looking for specifically? Three. Are you looking for something uh, specific? Well, we we might be sleeping in the woods, so I guess tents or sleeping bags, any kind of fabric. Uh, you have you have the shelter. standard um, sleeping equipment. So you do indeed. Well, where's it gone here? Well, they don't have it under there. So you do have blankets. There's two blankets. There's two um, inflatable pillows that um, are too short, and then they'll just be flat. Um, is that for a bag or for both bags? In each bag, there is a blanket, right, okay, a pillow. There is a very thin um, cord of rope uh, made out of carbon fiber. There is a waterproof notepad in both of them. The two nano packs, whatever um, Chase and Alex did with them, they were out of the uh, thing. There is two energy, uh, two drink bottles, empty drink bottles, two grappling hooks. And two right. old school walkie talkies. <laughs> Can I test the one if it works? <laughs> oh. The two walkie talkies click on, but you can't get any anything going across. So the thing's just static. A very. If you near would like to remind you. <laughs> I mean, I didn't see Alex sneaking off, so I don't know if he has the other back. That's true. Or where he is. And that's so. It. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take the rope and the grappling hook from, from the one bag that's left behind for now, because I'm gonna go back up in the tree to keep watch. Okay. Uh, I think I'll leave the rest there for now. It's not really enough supplies for all five of us, but we should manage it. Um, I will take defensive position whilst Jean and Larry start stripping the power cells. I am not being subtle about being defensive. Right, they I haven't been so far. <laughs> I've been that bit of a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Watch now. He'll roll and he'll get like Nat a self check. Oh, oh, go. Cool. <laughs> As far as I was aware, I was doing pretty well as my stealth check. You were doing pretty well, mate. No, no one else. Good effort. It, no. Good effort, mate. So, uh, Chase, you're going to jump back up and readjust how you're going to position yourself aiming out, yeah? Roll yes. an intimidation check. Oh, I'm, I'm proficient in this. Good. We all rolls you need to be. That is a 19. Good 19. Um, Alex, you're staying hidden, yeah? Are you staying hidden for the next two hours? Mm-hmm. Cool. Jake, you're going back up into the trees. Are you climbing above the trees, which will hinder your sight to the ground? Or are I'm, you staying below no, the staying, canopy so you can see the ground? Staying below the canopy this time. Cool. Give me a perception Can I check. try and be sneaky about it? You can give me a stealth and a perception. Stealth first. Uh, okay. So that's all this <laughs> Oh, that was almost a lot lower than it actually ended up on. That's uh, 19. 19 on stealth. I should have plus 6 on stealth, I never use it. Yeah, that's 19. Cool. And can I have a perception? I can try. You can. It is 15 plus 2, 17. 17 on perception. Cool. Uh, Jean and Larry, for the next two hours, you're going to be trying to take out three power cores from a broken. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'll be easy. Totally easy. So I'm going to want three rolls off you, Sean. Yeah. Larry is not good enough to give you advantage, but I will yeah. allow Whoa. him to give you a plus two. Cool. Okay. Additional to your other rolls. Um, um, mechanics? Uh, indeed. Good start. Is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> 
How bad? I climb higher up. How, how does the word nap come in front of it? Oh, yeah. fuck's <laughs> sake. Oh, I think Nate's right. actual name is <laughs> And it will be Nat from now on. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, notes, the notes I were about to make, I don't need to make anymore. Uh, and the note I made earlier is now relevant. So, <laughs> Jean, as you, as you and Larry get there uh, and you get to the panel that you need removing first, you start pulling... Uh, where the panel is bent, you get Larry to grip and start pulling it back and he pulls the panel back enough that you can get in. As he does, there is a gush of this um, anti-freeze blue liquid um, comes gushing out where it had been building up and you can now see access through a few smaller panels uh, where the cores would be. They're obviously, when I say smaller panels, they're big enough that this uh, foot wide, two foot long um, power cell could um, fit in and there's four of them. Um, three of them you are aware are the ones for the actual thing. The fourth one is normally a backup. You can see that's damaged beyond repair and seems to be responsible for a lot of the leakage. It's not as powerful and is usually a, a burn bright, die quick sort of um, power core usually to get you to the ground when stuff's gone very bad but that is unsalvageable of the three power cords the first one you come across you have a bit of a moment you take out the uh, panel remove the screws and such you pass it to Larry you turn back round um, you're looking around you haven't got any screwdrivers or anything like this so you take out your knife yep and you've got all three knives don't you John I've actually got four, but yeah. Yeah, so you've got like vibro and all that palaver? Phase, vibro, and normal. Yeah. So you take out your phase knife, yeah? It's got a bell as the selection. You <laughs> thought you were getting your normal knife, right? Just to <coughs> use as a makeshift screwdriver, but you actually crack out the uh, phase knife, which, yeah. uh, as you go towards a screw and activate it, it pierces the cell. Well, Paige is a uh, new characters <laughs> on in the uh, page one there. Page in, one. The, in the amazing <laughs> carbon book. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And you pierce the cell. Uh, give me a D10 roll. If you, how many times is Young going to nearly kill Larry in the space of two weeks? <laughs> She's doing a fucking good effort. Got a seven. Got a seven. <laughs> cool. Two seconds. <laughs> Just saying, stop listening to Sean. I want so, like, like listening to the guy with 40 years worth of combat. So, Jake, you're up in the trees. Yeah. Chase, I'm 20 years. <laughs> Chase, you're in the jet with your gun aimed out. Essentially, you're just sat there with a torch just under your chin, lighting up your face. Come at me. <laughs> Alex, for the two hours, what are you doing and where are you one hour in? Ah, uh, I. Miles away from the jet. <laughs> yeah, how far does an hour's worth of travel get you? <laughs> um, I think I'm going to move away from the jet, seeing as I was about 20 foot away from quite a loud conversation about removing batteries from a plane that's been smashed into the ground. I understand, Meta. Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> I will be 40 meta feet away. <laughs> <laughs> no, basically, um, all Alex is going to really be interested in in, a, in the current time frame is um, trying to push back the encroachment of what the tribes people are doing. How, how, how are you planning on pushing back? Well, seeing if now that these guys have come out and walked around and been really freaking obvious in what they're doing, if that has drawn the attention of the they creatures are at all. watching. Give, okay. me an, give me an intelligence check. Chase is nailed to a tree by crossbow bolts. If you haven't worked this out already, the intelligence beep, 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 check will probably drop some. Oh, respectable. 20. Not natural. Cool. Um, they don't look hostile um, if you were to put anything on it you reckon they're waiting for you lot to bugger off so they can salvage the place ok they don't seem to be stalking around guns up you know none of this uh, hand signal stuff um, there's just a lot of them surrounding the area and they ain't coming like a very vulture-esque um, 
carrying bird sort of mentality just the way they're behaving and staying on the edge they don't seem to be coming forwards you don't know if they've seen you you know That's they've seen them lot. Marine in the combat <coughs> medic in a you minute. know you've seen them lot but um does it does it look like anyone in particular is a leader there doesn't appear to be a leader they all seem to know what they're doing okay as they and did, definitely they just Go on. clicks and whistles and yeah, no they are communicating in sound which is most talking but uh, <laughs> uh, but nothing that you would, uh, would recognize as a language okay uh mm. In which case, yeah, I'm pretty much just going to move about 40 foot away from the plane to about where they were encroaching um, to try and encircle so you're, round. you're 40 feet the, from the jet? Yeah, to try and circle round um, some of the natives that are watching. Cool. So, in that first hour, you, you do exactly that. And you position yourself about 40 feet from the jet. Um, Jean? <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just going to take a breath. Monologuing coming. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ, man! I like Larry. So, you you pull out your face shift knife, and you sweat in the humidity and the radiation, the acidic taste on your tongue. Um, even though you were able to resist its levels, you do realise it's been several hours since you've had a sleep, as in a proper yeah. sleep. Um, you spent most of the night running around District Five in a gunfight, racing back across. Um, getting a couple hours kip ish uh, <laughs> to be great with the monologue thank you Ashana um, just to pause the monologue before I go on go check out Ashana, she's a glass crafter unbelievable, absolutely amazing glass crafter go watch her streams uh, they're quite late for us UK folk but it's well worth staying up till midnight 1 in the morning to watch her, brilliant anyway, carry on so you, pull out your face shift knife <laughs> And, it's like uh, carbon, it's the future, it's <laughs> advertisement during the game. All in your hoods you get these pop-ups of Ashana's glass working. <laughs> yeah. And that's what puts Jean off to be honest, so you've just killed Jean, well done Ashana. Um, you pull out your face shift night, you're sweating, the adrenaline's settling now, you get that moment of you could probably do with an energy drink or two. Um, shame Alex, robbed him and put him on the fire. Um, you deserve. You go towards the cell, the first bit, and you can see where you've now opened the casing and it's now exposed to you. And you know that you just got a, cu a couple of, they're almost, uh, they're like a biological um, connection um, that you've only worked with a couple of times and you were part of getting them off world. And you cut through them. But as you cut through them, you actually slice through the battery. The seal breaks on it, the sanctuary seal breaks on it. And it starts like a thick gel um, swelling when it reacts with air. And it starts swelling out of the uh, power cell. And you give me a history check. That's a random roll. <laughs> would I not, would I also have any history check of being around these in the Badlands? No, other than currency, this is the biggest thing you've ever seen. It's the difference well, between I... someone handing you a pound coin and someone handing you a 50 pound note. You know it's well, money, this, that's uh... it. This this dice, I just want to say say goodbye. It's uh, it's retiring. Uh, you just not one twice. It's, it's a very nice dice, oh. uh, but it's 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 done me oh. a proper kick. Oh. 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 I love this dice. <laughs> this dice rocks. <laughs> at least when, at least when Sparks died, it was my own stupidity. So, this time, Rob, it's because you can't roll the dice. Rob, sit up. Stop slouching. <laughs> it's uh, it's bad. Say so, yeah. <laughs> John, as you cut through, when you see this gel start swelling, um, it goes from this uh, coolant blue colour and it starts going a dark blue, almost like it's hardening when it reacts with the air, and then it cracks and splits and spills out like a wet foam instead of the gel substance before. Um, you look back, some it seems deja vu -y about it, um, and then you remember uh, your crash. Something similar happened, the power cell got um, breached and uh, caused what the what you can only try to remember as your now cybernetic arm. The details of what happened after that cell cracked are still limited to you. And even if you are trying to remember, the only thing that sticks out in your mind is you look down at your arm and just join the dots. You make an educated guess. You got about seven minutes before these cells explode. Cool. I will uh, very calmly, very carefully, 
put it down the floor. Look it's over. still it's still in the bracket. All right, so yeah. I'll very calmly kind of like, That's sort supposed of to happen, look, over it. Just look over at uh, look over at uh, Lyra and just go. So um, change of plan. Yeah. Run. Tear out the fucking ship. <laughs> Full blown. So, <laughs> change of plan. Uh, run. And Chase, I'm Jake. Um, Alex, I'll get a perception off you as you're concentrating on the uh, surrounding folk. Chase and Jake, you notice that Jean and Larry, they go under the jet. About an hour passes. And then Jean very very quickly followed by Larry just bolt away from the jet straight at the fork in the tree lines giving no fucks what's in front of them in a fearful way of what's behind them Larry is not Larry is not an intelligent man he's a strong man. <laughs> as, as, I'm, as I'm running past Jake and Chase I'll be like run run <laughs> Chase you hear Jean shout run uh, Jake, you hear Jean shout, run. Alex, you don't need to do a perception check because Jean just shouted, run. <laughs> Jake and Chase, what do you do? Um, 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 how high up in the tree was I again? You were 40 feet in the air. Because you weren't at the top of the canopy, you were just below it to keep an eye on the ground. So you're 40 feet up a tree. You don't know why he's shouting, run. He's just shouting, run. I'm tempted to try going higher up, see if that works, but I have a bad feeling on that one. I have the same bad feeling, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> Go down it's not a game man. unless we kill one character every other session. That's the real DM's goal. The DM? You have to make it subtle. No, I'm Give going me. down. Right, so that will be you running down, or climbing down as fast as you can. Alex, they're all bolting um, in a different direction to you. They're not running away from you, you're sort of here and they're running past you. Straight at the people in the trees, who, as you see these lot running, all scarper. Uh, that was my immediate worry, was the un slightly unintelligent people that were out here would end up dying. How do you know they're unintelligent? And the natives. <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> well played. That's all right. I will... Um... I will effectively wait till Jake comes down. You're not leaving the jet. I will let Jake come down first, and as soon as he's in front of me, I'll go after behind him. I will wait until he's down from the tree. So, Jake, you've climbed down the tree. Do you run after Larry and John? Yes. Cool. Chase, you see Jake run after Larry and John, who's ahead, like 40 feet ahead of him. Easy. Alex, you see yeah. them all now running from the jet in further into the trees. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll sling the giant rucksack on my back and go. Be at least be running in a south direction. <laughs> Are you running in a southerly direction? I'm running wherever. Um, Jean, Jean you were running ahead. Are you running in a southerly direction? Um, I, I mean, I run in the sort of general direction that Jake indicated San Francisco is in. Cool. So, so yeah, yeah, you are running in a southerly-ish direction. Yeah, um, I'll be you notice that the. Um, people ahead of you that were silhouettes before and then were pointed out to you with shapes and such they are obviously are spooked by whatever you're doing and despite not being involved in the activities of the last day <laughs> that you spent in this wreckage um, they oh what did I say an hour there we go yep um, they see you lot running at them and they bolt and now you all see that they are humanoid in shape really heavy set from the waist up um, thinner legs than that behind and they sort of almost run on their upper bodies with their fists and they are using their hind legs to push through they are covered in the fauna of the forest um, their noises get louder of clicks and whoops um, it's you don't really pay attention to it Alex you, you get that that is their like thieves camp communication type thing um, that they are rocking out to each other and you are all just bombing it into the forest those that the uh, people creatures that were looking in at you before just go in all directions they don't run in a certain direction they just literally scatter 
to the uh, four winds that you can't feel in the forest. Um, as you're running through, your lungs are burning, and uh, the further away you get from the jet, um, almost like the jet's burning fires all around it, and whatever was going on with its protection from radiation is weakened this far out. And you start feeling that heavy burn um, on your lungs, your tongue, your gums, and your eyes. Larry, you feel it as well. You're used to it, so it doesn't cause you any damage or anything. It's just bringing back. It's been a long time since you were out in the Badlands, uh, and it comes back like deja vu attached to a sledgehammer. And you go bombing out. I all need you to do fortitude uh, saves mm. as you run further out. Is this classed as an ability check? Should I gamble? It is classed as an ability. Well, don't ask me, mate. I'm happy for you to explode in a ball of fire. <laughs> No, it's well, not an I'll... ability check because it's got a separate save. It's a save, save mate. Sorry, fortitude, mind, and reflex are saves. <clears throat> That's further up the exhaustion tree. tree. You say a fortitude save, sorry. Yes, fortitude. It's not disadvantage, mate. Just so oh, it yeah, cool. I need to know if I've got my good <clears throat> bonus or my not so good bonus. You've got your good one. Alex, what do you get? Uh, I got a 20, non natural. Cool. Larry? Nine. <laughs> That's with a plus five again. <laughs> <laughs> I love this dice. You only got a 10 last time. Um, Jake? 23. Chase? 20, not unnatural. John? 21. Is that the same dice? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, it came back. It came back. <laughs> With um, a vengeance. Larry? You just blow, you've just blown up more money we could ever hope for in our entire lives. <laughs> we're all right. Larry? Yeah, you, uh, that's John's job, isn't it? Um, Larry, you are breathing real heavy. You won't breathe this heavy oh. since the good old days of training for the uh, prize fights. Um, as you're breathing heavy, it's like you are swallowing fire. Your throat is burning. Your eyes start to run and stream. Um, you're having moments of when you were doing gas attack training and tear gas and all that good stuff. Um, back in the Marines, hoorah. And you... You're managing to keep pace with Jean, but now you're struggling to see clearly whether uh, your footing is going in this heavily. It is such a slog uh, through there that you are just pulling oh, yourself plus six over athletics. Roots. I'm pretty like athletic, even though it's affecting me. Yeah, but you're also near blind and dying inside. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> I mean, you could try to do a push up if you want. <laughs> <laughs> so you um. Which is an ability check, and you will. Be... <laughs> so you, uh, do, you I, go... do I notice? Do I notice? You Larry's notice Larry start starts staggering. He's ah. he's I'll, I'll risen re through it. I'll reach over to him and, and try and inject some nanites into him with a bonus action as we're running to try and help him. Cool, Larry. You feel a bit of revital revitalization hit you as you're running. You still get the burning sensation, but you don't feel oh. as as clogged down in your lungs anymore. It's fucking woodland man <laughs> you go rocking out um, you kind of keep an eye on one another um, as best you can you run for a good five or six minutes and then there is an almighty it's a almost cushioned explosion so instead of it being very aggressive and loud and special effects movie style it kind of goes <laughs> shoots up to the sky the greatest mushroom you've ever seen uh, this mushroom as it burns through the radiation and the fauna um, all around it uh, gives it this weird fluorescent green smoke effect that shoots up above the canopy um, incinerates the tree that Jake was in only five or six minutes ago and now the shock wave starts racing through the um, forest towards you even though you guys have put some uh, meterage between you and the explosion you are running through difficult terrain and you are running on near levels of exhaustion from your minimal sleep over the last 20 odd hours. Um, I would like you all to give me <laughs> first a fortitude, then a reflex, then a mind. Oh. So fortitude first. Oh, so one of each. One of each. Fortitude okay. first, okay? Do you want us to roll all three or roll No, no, just result? roll your fortitudes first, because it'll determine whether you need to do the other two. <laughs> uh, uh. Well, we thought Burn Up Sparks' workshop 16, was going to be a pinnacle right. of cool. an explosive. Cool. Have you all rolled? Yeah. Right, Alex? 19. 19. Larry? 13. 
you know, Larry will way better when I control him. But Jake. <laughs> <laughs> When you controlled him, he got a hit put out on him by his previous gang and got flayed alive. Ah, but he were alive with a beer in his hand. It's not a bit of a radiated forest getting blown up. <laughs> Jake, what Fair. other... What did you get, sorry? 16. 16. Chase? 17. Jean? 16. Cool. Um, Larry, you are thrown as this um, shockwave catches up with you. Um, had a rough couple of days, Larry. And you it? are thrown <laughs> off your feet through the air. You hit uh, the bark, uh, the trunk of one of the trees, and you just spin through the air. And you are knocked unconscious. You take... I have not got my dice out all night. This is our fucking... Professional DM, ladies and gentlemen. He doesn't need it. I don't need it with you lot, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry that we RP more than we actually kill shit. I, I don't know, I, just, I didn't know how we get my dice on. You take, it's, our we, it's our weekly debate club. You take 16 points of bludgeoning damage and are KO'd. You are unconscious. <laughs> 16, yeah? Yep. Right, the rest of you, the force of the shockwave does not knock you from your feet and you're still able to keep making your way through the forest. Um, you do notice... Uh, at least Jean and Chase notice that Larry goes spinning through the air. Alex and Jake do not. Um, now you all give me a reflex save as the flying debris of the forest comes <laughs> launching itself following the uh, booming sound of nuclear blast. Once you've got, have you all rolled? Larry, you don't need to roll, mate. You're fine. Yeah. Alex, what did you get? 18. Sorry, 20, sorry. non natural. 20. Jake. Non-natural. Yeah, that's fine. Jake, 18. Yeah. Chess? 16. Jean? 20. Oh, you all take half damage. Um, so as the... You're off. You go on, Chess. I was going to say, I can see Larry go down. Yeah. How <laughs> far in front of me, in front of me is it? Because I was deliberately staying at the back of everyone. Roll a d4. Uh, four. If he's staying at the back of everyone, he's miles in front of you. He's right. like 60, 70 feet because he ran out first with Jean and you waited for Jake to come down. Yeah. Because I was going to say, if he, if I see him go down, once I get to him, I'll stop, pick him up over the shoulder and start carrying him. Cool. So, as all the, so you don't get thrown from your feet. All the debris of the blast comes flying through, bits of metal, uh, the trees themselves, a very large mushroom. Um, you all manage to duck, dive, dip, dodge, etc. <laughs> and uh, you only take 10, 11, you take 5 points of piercing damage and 2 points of radiation damage. Yep. Yep. If I take any of that extra, am I just knocked out and conscious? Uh, you are essentially protected by the everything around you mate um there's enough of the forest that it takes enough of the damage that you don't get hit while down i assume while we're resolving the saves we can't really take any other actions you what do you want to do what are you thinking well, of doing? See, see, seeing larry go down i'm gonna i'm gonna stop and go over so this it. this will so essentially you'll be hit by a you know a shock wave um, yeah. yes you've resisted it but it's not like you can go oh, i've resisted it and then walk around normally to um yeah, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. So while you are not getting knocked down, trying to um, reduce the amount of damage you're taking from flying, exploding batteries, uh, there is a wave of like static energy comes uh, following, like a like, well, literally like a wave. So you've been shocked, physical, and then this static energy comes roaring out towards you. Locked. <clears throat> Can you all give me a mind save? Good in me. Uh, yes, but yours is at disadvantage, Larry. Excellent. Uh, so, um, what does uh, mine go off of? Is it dexterity? Intelligence. Intelligence. Uh, Intelligence. Yeah, int I wish it was dexterity. <laughs> oh, at disadvantage? Yep. <clears throat> oh dear. Cool. Jake? Uh, not 13. Jake. 13. Yeah. Cool. Alex? 21. Larry? Good news, my first roll was a 17. Bad news, my second roll was a 3. That's, that's uh, not so much. Uh, Jason? 
Uh, so if it goes off intelligence, that's a minus one, so I got a 17. Oh, nice, man. John? 21. Cool. Larry, you're taking all of it. Rusty, you're taking half. Uh, 12. Right, so you all take six points. Yep. Six. Six of psychic damage. Uh, Larry, you take 12. <laughs> they all take six because they halved. As this static energy just rushes through you, Alex and Chase, you do not like the feeling of it. It's akin to an EMP, which doesn't affect you like it does normal um, machinery and such, but you still don't like the feeling of it going off in your proximity. Um, the static energy, you actually see like fade out as it rushes out in front of you, and you see Larry roll a bit through the uh, undergrowth um, with a bit of this blue and green uh, static all around his body and then it fades away you all sort of take a moment's breath as you're kind of on your feet not able to keep sprinting the shockwave, the shrapnel essentially and the static energy from the blast you all look around, it's like you've got your hands over your ears for a few seconds, feels like hours um, you will all have had experience around explosives in your backgrounds so are used to that ringing effect disappearing you essentially mentally take a knee and just centre yourselves the forest goes deadly quiet you don't know what's out there anymore you see Larry ahead of you not moving and we'll I'll call it there we will call it there it is <laughs> 1 minute to 11 and we normally finish at 11 anyway. Thank you very much, people, for watching. Uh, they spent a grand total of about eight and a half hours at a crash site, <laughs> which was incredible. That's the first time we got to roll dice all night. Thank you so much for watching. Um, there was over 20 viewers all night. That is brilliant. Thank you very much for the support. It's great to have a little community watching us. Um, don't forget, we've got Pathfinder Second Ed on Saturday. Uh, Dice of the Beholder on Sunday, that's D&D, &D, Ed, and then we're back round again to more D&D, &D, Vampire, The Masquerade, more Carbon, and Pathfinder, Rinse and Repeat. If you're watching on the VOD, thank you very much. If you're watching now, great, thank you very much. Uh, Saturday evening, Saturday evening, 8pm, Kerry, Pathfinder 2, uh, Second Ed. Thank you very much, players, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. It was really cool mm -hmm. to see you lot try and deal with stuff outside um, the urban area that we've been in for the last nine weeks we'll see what happens with Larry and the rest of them next week for now thank you very much take care of yourselves stay safe stay sane and uh, it's going to be time say goodbye players bye guys bye 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 bye, bye. Good night, guys. <laughs>